Hey guys, Sushik was here and welcome back to another Thursday live stream where yes, today we've got a few things on the cards. Obviously we're going to do the news that ever is normal, but the big thing is we've got the Arrow DJ hat on the stream today. So we're going to uh, talk about what we're going to talk about. We're going to go through the newsletter and then we're going to introduce him. So let's say a few hellos in the chat, see who we've got in. So we've got SG Soundwave in the chat, welcome. We've got Penny Lancaster, Brix Motion, uh, Righteous, one of our mods, thanks. Obviously, SG Soundwave, one of our members, thanks for being a member. We've got Alpha Tryon, Tiny T, welcome to the stream. We've got Joseph Torillo, Charlie Plays, Lord Avix, Laser83. Obviously, we've got the LDJ Hearts, they join us shortly. Uh, William Wilkinson, uh, Elf, SPS Gaming, my good friend Frankster, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll talk about that soon as well. Uh, we've got Alpha Tryon, we've got Air Elf, Illicit Pulse, um, Atari, thanks for joining us, Stuck in Beta, Itachi Uichi, I think you were on the, uh, stream last time as well on, on um i can't pronounce it but i apologize uh we've got dojack and d fool bull simon hayes just jumping in there at the end as well so thanks for joining us so like i said we've got the arrow dj heart on the stream today and uh we're gonna be talking about um something that sort of i picked up from his stream so i was watching uh, him and frankster on fps game and they were talking about five star bots and some of the ratings i was like i what was he talking about? But it, it sort of changed my way of thinking a bit on how we rate bots as players in general and uh, opened my eyes to something. So I thought we'd get uh, the arrow on, get his point of view, and then, uh, yeah, have a bit of a chat about it, really, on uh, maybe how we view bots might change after that. Hmm. Uh, and then, obviously, uh, we're going to talk about uh, his uh, channel, his streams, and, uh, yeah, some of the conclusions he came to. So that's the uh, idea for today. So, let's get into the news. So, oops, try again. So, uh, this week's event is called The Proving. So, it is a Super XP event, 20k, which are a decent event, so like 20k events. Uh, the normal battle zones at the normal times. And uh, lots of decent rewards all scattered through. So, the bot XPs and four star shards. The only criticism we'll have is that the very final thing that you win is three star shards. That seems a bit strange to me, considering four star shards are there at 17,150. So, I don't really get that, but hey, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, not a bad event, especially if you need some bot XP to catch up on and some gold cores. So, I think this is very good for some intermediate players. Combat Spark, obviously, and other Sparks are always welcome, but very good for intermediate players. Uh, and then, yes, Cyber Pass Season 2 is here. Excited for this. I've obviously bought it already and started on this. Uh, some really good rewards, guys. You can't beat this for value, honestly, for $10. Absolutely amazing. Uh, just for the fuel cap increase and the XP increase alone, it's worth the $10. So, yeah, some really, really good rewards. Some Total Spark Crystals at the end. Uh, they have made these rewards slightly harder to get. Uh, they've extended the points because it is a six-week saga. So, you have got six weeks, but they've extended it more. So, they've changed it a bit. So, uh, yeah, a bit on the fence with this one, but, um, yeah, it's going to be a, it's a decent one regardless. It's still $10, but it should maybe be a bit harder to complete, but uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see and give them some feedback regardless. Uh, we can still pass, uh, still gift the side pass, I should say. So, uh, if you've got a friend that, uh, you know, is free to play or you want to just gift it someone, then you can do. They're working through them at the minute. Uh, they've got some green Shire crystals uh, where you can get some five-star shards. Um, so, yeah, they're not bad. They're not too bad. Uh, the five-star shards on offer are still quite low. But, hey, if you're going to buy bundles, then you might as well. But to be honest, yeah, premium crystals and premium uh, combat chips, mm, they're not my, not my taste. They're a bit low odds. So I'd rather wait for a character bundle myself. Uh, you'll get more four-stars, more chance of getting bots, more chance of getting dupes. And you'll probably get the five-star shards. Anyway, but if you are going to buy it, then yeah. Uh, we've got some new combats on the way. So, Zor, I think it is, and Slugfest. So, uh, yeah, it looked pretty cool. Uh, they look like minions, though. As I've said before, I'm not a big fan of minions. So, that's, uh, you know, 
a bit to be said about that, but we'll, we'll see. Like I said, I'm not in test anymore, but I will obviously review them when they are done and give you guys the lowdown as always on what I think. Um, and then lastly of all, let's just skip through. We've got the schedule and it is another leaderboard. So yeah, quite a few people are a bit annoyed about this, having a second leaderboard so soon. But um, yeah, it, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a big fan of having two leaderboards in a row. I doubt anyone is. Um, but they've said that this bot is going to be amazing. That's the reason. So, you know, we'll wait and see. We will wait and see. They have said it's a bot that everyone's been asking for for quite a while. I've got a feeling it's a healer of some kind. And my idea that I put forward was that it would be a healer, but would not have a healing ability. It would have some sort of attack ability. So I'm hoping that is the case. A healer with an attack ability could be interesting to add to your team and something I'd definitely chase anyway. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, and then a couple of uh, changes. Uh, the force field disruptor has been uh, reduced for silver and gold. The G metal has stayed the same. Uh, this is because pretty much the gold and G metal were very little difference. So they've uh, kept them both the same. Uh, they've sorry, they've reduced the gold and silver. So yeah, I kind of get that. As long as the G metal is still as powerful as it is, then yeah, fair enough. Uh, they've also uh, buffed the lightning rod or changed how it works to block a percentage of electrical damage from 2.5% up to 40% depending on the core. So obviously a maxed out G metal will do 40%, a level 1 bronze or silver, sorry, a level 1 silver, not bronze, where, where are they gone? Uh, it's 2.5%. So yeah, I've been doing a bit of testing with this and yeah, I think it's a bugged. Uh, from what I've found, it's doing very little change to Sea Spray, which is what it came out for, but has absolutely nullified the likes of Bumblebee and Laser Optimus. So, I'm a bit on the fence with this one. If it, if it does count as Sea Spray, then fair enough, but I don't see the point in it. If it doesn't count as Sea Spray, but then just count as B and Laser Optimus, because they wasn't that overpowered. At the end of the day, this core has got to count as Sea Spray. That is the reason for it. If it doesn't, there's no point in having it. So, uh, that's to be said. Whether it's uh, designed like that or not, uh, we'll wait and see. And uh, that is the news. And yes, I would like to welcome the Arrow DJ Hat to the stream. Welcome. What's going on, everybody? Waza, thank you for having me. Glad to finally be here. Yeah, I'm glad to have you. And, uh, well, it's kind of a repaying the favour, so to speak, because I know that your uh, video hasn't gone out yet with uh, you and Frankster, but we did that today. Uh, and it was good to be on your uh, your channel as well, yours and Frankster's. So, uh, yeah, and uh, we sort of uh, had some good discussions about some bots. And and uh, that's what I sort of, uh, where it sort of came from, really. But, um but yeah, but uh, listen, guys, go and check out. Uh, obviously, not just the DJ Our Hearts channel, uh, but also, uh, you know, FPS gaming as well. Uh, you know, I love the I love the podcast. Uh, I really do. And uh, you know, I get that sometimes someone just talking about the game is not ideal, and they want to see action or they want to see things. But it's great for me. You know, you can put it in the background while you're doing other things, while you're playing the game, and it's just something to listen to. And I thought it was a really good idea. And, you know, I've watched uh, a good few, three or four now, last three or four you've done. And, uh, yeah, it's really good. So uh, what made you start the uh, the podcast then? Well, it was actually the Frankster's idea. So uh, he and I both did, you know, our crystal crackings on Mondays. Occasionally I would do a video throughout the week where it's like, hey, this is a great bot or hey these are the next five stars i think are coming out you know and then he he called me one day or he texted me and says i've got an awesome idea for a show i was like okay so he pitched me the idea and i thought well yeah that's a, that's fantastic so we we so we 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 put it together we did our first episode and it went really well you know we worked some bugs later on we've been gradually making improvements to it um we we i recorded on my laptop i do the editing and post-production i try to get it posted the evening of or maybe the next morning um but it was entirely his idea which is why he's the host of the show it's on his channel and um you know and and we just have a lot of fun with it yeah it's uh, like i said i enjoy it i like it um and like I said, we've done our video uh, about bots, and I watched, I think it was your last uh, bot cast, I think it was, I might be mistaken there, where you started rating all the five stars in the game. 
And mm. uh, obviously, we've talked about this in private, and uh, there's a few bots that let's just say I disagree with. Let's just say that. Um, but I was literally sat at the screen going, "What? What is he on about? What? What is he talking about? This guy has no clue." And then I actually thought I agreed with Frankster a lot more, which surprised me really, because then obviously, uh, as we talked about again, uh, I'm coming from a war perspective, very much war driven. And again, we've talked about that on your stream. Don't want to talk too much about it, but you know, very much war driven, where you are more event driven, and. Uh, Something sort of hit home a bit where you started talking about certain bots that can't power level. And that sort of started making me thinking that, yeah, you know what? There's some bots out there that in war, when equipped with other bots, are very good. But there's some bots out there that are very good in wars you can't power level with. Mm. And that sort of made me think that, you know, I go through all these ratings and uh, I rate all these bots from a war perspective. I've never really rated them that much from a power level in perspective. The videos I do with text, we started to touch upon that, but it's mostly from a war perspective. So I think we should sort of go through them again, uh, sort of rate them and things like that. And uh, yeah, see if we can sort of come to our own conclusion on the bots, really. And hopefully at the end, I could try and convince you of a few bots that you were uh, absolutely slaughtered that uh, they're not as bad as you think. Hopefully, uh, and along hopefully, the way, hopefully, I'll be able to convince you of a few bots that I think are fantastic, which you absolutely despise. Uh, maybe, may, maybe. <laughs> well, let's just say that grind time is really trying to convince me that pipes is good. I know you've done the same, but um, I'm and he was not a believer of pipes originally. No. He he got the five star, and now he's a believer. I, I'm still on the fence. I still don't think so, but like I said, that's part of the conversation. Uh, thingy. But going back, so I want to talk about events first. So from your perspective, so obviously I can sit here all day and talk about what I think of the events and things like that. So what did you think of the leaderboard? So that's obviously a big topic at the minute. It was top 500 years ago. It went to top 300, and now it's top 130. Um, where did you finish in the leaderboard? Uh, we finished Cybercore Alpha. Uh, best of the best of the Cybercore family of alliances uh, finished 39th in the world. Uh, nice. Cybercore first, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And what about the other alliances? Did they finish top 130 still? Did they finish the totalizer? Or... No, no. Um, every We pull all the best, the top scores from each alliance in the family in Titans. The next alliance down from that is another one that's reserved for leaderboards called Cybercore Legion. And everybody who is close but not quite there goes to legion and they did not quite finish top 130 uh the frankster was actually in that alliance because he bid lower than he was actually capable of doing and uh, i don't remember exactly where they placed but it was not top 130. so what was their general consensus of the leaderboard we're looking forward to it before it happened would they enjoy it uh, uh i it was there it was kind of mixed actually i mean we everybody obviously I mean, we finished 39th in the world, which is no small feat. So everybody was was chipping in, and they were like gun ho, but they were kind of mixed as to the rewards. I think some guys were like, "Yeah, this looks like a good bot," or "Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not bothered about this particular event." They just wanted to place highly in the in the event. I think um, it was kind of a mixed bag, you know, because we have a mix of players. You have some players who are uh, top level and you know on the same level that you're at and then we have some players that are a little more on my le my level um so it's kind of a like i said it's kind of it was kind of a mixed bag yeah i mean like i said we i can we can talk about leaderboards obviously the top five uh, i've said all along that the top five needs something better than the four star uh, and that needs filtering down um we got the uh the four star and um i just I've not used a four star. I've not even leveled it. I've not even opened the crystal yet. I'll be honest with you. And I just think there's people out there that could use that four star. Maybe like yourself. You know, there's players that are lower down the leaderboard that would maybe fight. I mean, would you have placed higher if the if the four star was top thirty? Say, would you have pushed for that top thirty? Maybe. Uh, no, I don't think. I mean, we because we pushed as hard as we could. I mean, uh -huh. we always pushed as hard as we can. So I think. To have broken our own record uh, shows that we were giving it everything we had got. Yeah. Um, and those extra 25 fuel cells from the Cyber Poise, uh, Cyber Poise, Cyber Pass uh, did not hurt any. That, that actually yeah. probably helped a lot of us out. 
So are you guys pretty much all free to play or some spend it, or it's a mixed bag again. Yeah. We got some of our top scores. You know, I remember one leaderboard in particular, and I don't know that it happened this time around because I, I don't have the scoreboard in front of me. But I have we have on occasion had guys that scored 60k uh to my measly 20, 25k that I was scoring when I first got started with Cybercore Flame of Alliances. And then we have players like uh, myself that will spend a couple of bucks here and there, but we're not going to spend enough, you know, bread to get to 60,000 points. We just, you know, we just can't do it on our budgets. Uh, and then we do have some guys that are 100% free to play, um, you know, uh, that are, uh, you know, that that's they, they just grind it out, you know, and it's a lot tougher for them. So my hat's off to them. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's very hard when you've got a mixture of players like that. Some are definitely free to play. Some will spend, some only spend on certain things. But you know, for me, I just think there needs to be some enticement for lower players. Really, I mean, what? So, what made you go for the top fifty? Was it simply just about the pride of saying, "Let's see how far we can go"? Was there a particular prize you wanted to get or anything? Or yeah, uh, it, for me, because I knew we weren't going to get the four star when it was announced that I was going to be top ten. Um, as much as I would like to have gotten there for that, I knew we weren't going to get there. So for me, for my motivation is always, so they put out on Discord the bid, you know, place your bid. What are you going to try to score in the event? You got to make your bid. So I bid 30K. I always bid 30K because I know I can do 30K. Um, so my motivation is always get to 30K, get my bid. Don't let my alliance down. And then everything after that, icing on the cake. I scored 32,000. Um, and then, you know, it's motivating to, to see that everybody around me is doing the same thing. And we've grown a lot in the past year because we, we hit top 50 once. And then the very next event, we were back down to out of the top 100. And that was just, that was, that was very disappointing to me. And I know it was disappointing to all the other guys in the family. So for this time around, for us to hit the top 40, it's like, that was such a, just, you know, we're back. You know, so, so if they increase the rewards or reduced it, would that change your bid? Or are you sort of like, listen, I'm going to do 30k no matter what for my alliance, just for that matter of pride? Or would you, if they say they reduce the rewards, would you go, we well, you know what, I'm going to do 25k because I'm not happy with them rewards? So where do you stand with that? No, uh, well, I mean, don't get me wrong. If the reward was Spark, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother. I don't think anybody would, but uh if i still i think that the four star bot this time around should have been in the top 50. i think that should have been the award for the top 50. um but i mean it was a new bot and it's a bot that being motivated by grinding events out the way i am it's a bot that i think i'll get a lot of mileage out of especially now that they've reduced the cost of his uh his ability so I was just as motivated to get him as I would have been any other bot that's been released in the game. Yeah. So, I mean, I know. kind of understand SpaceX's point in that if they give it to the top 10, you've got to think that that's, well, you know, they're giving like away a four, a four staff of 400 people. Top right. 30 is 1,200 people. Top 50, so on, 2,000 people. How many of them people are not going to chase that bot then when it comes out in bundles because they've already got it? So I kind of understand that point of view. But for me, it's just still overvalued because, like I said, it's just a shame that there's, there's people in that top 10. Well, I think I'd go out on a limb and say out of that top 10, not a single person will use that four star at a high level right. it was. But they've got that and there's probably people around your level, whether it's 30, whether it's 50, whatever it is, that would use that and would enjoy that but oh, yeah. they don't have it. So I think I still think it needs balancing. I still think it's there. Top five, five star bot. Totally agree with that. They deserve everything they get because trust me, I've gone top five and people go out and talk about the money involved and things like that. It's not just that. I mean, I've said before that in that chat, usually someone comes in there and goes, right guys, kiss your kids goodbye. Kiss your wife goodbye. Cancel all your plans for the weekend. This is your weekend. And it literally is a 14 hour a day job to go top five for three days solid. You're pretty much right. on the game solid. Obviously, right. if you spend a bit more money, you could probably push it, but literally you are grinding that out all weekend. And uh, it's a hard thing, it is. So uh, fair play to them. They deserve everything they get, top five. But uh, 
yeah, I still think there's room for improvement. And I, I do think they need to lower that 130 to maybe 150, maybe. Um, mm. Lower the four star, I think, to top 30, maybe. Just to dangle that carrot. Because maybe you guys might think, you know what? Let's try and push the 35k or whatever. And let's try and get it, maybe. I don't know. Like I said, the more bots you get, the easier it is. But I just think that, you know, I've always said dangling that carrot in front of people changes a bit of mindset sometimes. They go, oh, well, you know, it might be worth it. You know, in the end, but um, yeah, that's to be seen. But uh, in terms of the other events, so what, do you like the chance events, and what do you think of those? I think yeah, I like. I don't mind the chance events at all because uh, they are. And I remember when they were sixty thousand points, and now they're a mil or it's not sixty thousand, six hundred thousand. Yeah, and now they're a million. Yeah. Um. So, and I still think that's fair because it doesn't take a top five alliance to get to that million points. Now, my alliance, we usually come up just short unless uh, it's one of those events where everybody's super motivated to complete it. And then the Cybercore Elite, which is the top-notch alliance in our family, will finish it you know, maybe uh, half a day early, and then they'll filter down into yeah. lower alliances, starting with Alpha, and they'll help us finish the event. But I, I think million points is, is okay for those events, and I like them because everybody's pretty much on a level playing field. Everybody has an equal shot at the bot. You know, it's not based on who got there first and who stayed there the longest. Um, I like, I do like those. Um, the prizes are usually worth it as long as they don't sneak Crimzeek in those containers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I agree <laughs> I with that. Yeah. That. But um, yeah, I do like those events. Cool. And the, uh, the shot of individual events, 10 K 20 K 30 K. Where do you stand on that? Oh, man. After after a leaderboard event or after a million point event, I relish those twenty k events. They're so chillax, yeah. you know. The the reward they still have maintained good rewards. They're still worth grinding, but you can finish it so early if you want to, or you you don't have to grind it out and grind it out and grind it out. You can take all weekend to do it, just using the bots that you're trying to level. And if you're free to play and you're not using cyber coins to continuously refresh the bot that you're leveling. You can just take your time, go in, do three or four battles with the bots that you're actively leveling, log out, wait for them to refresh, go back there and do it again at your leisure. It's I love those events. Yeah, same. I think the 10K event's too short, and I'd finish it by Saturday, and then be like, right, well, I'll just get some resources or something. and pretty right. much just, I'll just even not touch the game for a day. Whereas the 30K events, I'd probably stop at 10K because I'm like, I'm not going to get a 30k. It's only a total spark pretty much from 10 to 30. I'll just do right. a few extra K. But now, again, that sort of carrot, the dangling 20k, you could like, well, I could do 20k. And it sort of makes you play that bit more, really. And, you know, I'm a I'm big fan of anything that sort of makes you play a bit more, but not ridiculous amount. I mean, I think midweek, the balance is about right right now. They don't need any more game modes. They've added this battle pass in, and it sort of uses the modes it's already got, which is good. Mm -hmm. What's your take? Do you like? Do you pay for the premium battle pass? Yeah, yeah, I I paid for the premium battle pass last time around. I thought for ten dollars it was a fantastic deal. Um, I utilized every bit of what I got. The extra cyber, uh, the extra uh, fuel cells definitely helped in my event grinding. Um, I thought it was worth it, and as long as they keep it at ten bucks and they keep it, you know, where the rewards are on an even keel of what they were last time around and this time around, I think it'll be continue to be worth it. Yeah, yeah, agreed. I mean, I'm going to quick look at this one. It's uh, very similar. Um, obviously taking the uh, five-star combat shards out. So mm -hmm. uh, it's not the end of the world, though. I mean, they always said that the first one was going to be amazing, just yep. as, like, as a first. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to lie. When they said that, I was like, oh, the second one's going to be a bit, mm, I'm not too sure. And when they said yeah. five star shard might not be in it, I was like, "Well, that's a bit of a deal break." I mean, it's worth it for the for the uh, fuel cell increase and for the XP and things like that. Um, but yeah, I'm more than happy with this. It's very similar to the last one, really. To be fair, um, the G X XP core, uh, the G one cores, even the combiner spark, seven hundred fifty thousand combiner spark, which I'm oh, yeah. in desperate need of. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. That spark. <laughs> Uh, I've got loads, but <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I'm a bit of a hoarder at the minute. But um, yeah, I'm quite happy with it. Um, 
I think it's the best $10 you can spend in the game. Even if you're free to play, yeah. I'd advise you. I mean, I always say to people, listen, you're best buying this and you're best buying that. But I understand some people are free to play. But I just think for $10, I, I said to someone in the chat, I, I've sort of stuck with it. I would easily go and spend $10 on Jelly Babies. This is a lot more better value than Jelly Babies. So, no, um, you're right. I, I'm the same way. I, I probably spend that much or more on lunch two or three days a week. So Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I mean, I'm not saying go hungry and don't eat lunch, but, you know, they're, uh, <laughs> you know it's good value for money. That's all we're saying. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, how are, you how are you with the game right now? Are you pleased with the game? Any improvements you think it desperately needs? There, I, I'm, I mean, as far as the gameplay goes and the various things that we have to do in-game, like the Frankster and I mentioned this before, the game has gotten very, very busy. We have multiple game modes now. Um, there's lots of bots to choose from. There's bots that we're constantly having to level. Um, you know, the the events are uh, are always worth grinding or have been worth grinding for for the past several months because I've I've yet to see an event that had what I thought were poor rewards. I mean, we've gotten shard, we've been getting spark, we've been getting good stuff. We've got the titans now, so that has motivated me to could go back to just doing PvP again and grind out for that titan XP. Uh, they hinted that we're going to get um, missions missions coming up where you send your bots on a mission and then you can just yeah. log out. And when they come back for your mission, you log back in, collect the rewards. So that's something I'm looking forward to. I, I'm very pleased with everything we have in-game so far. There are a couple of buildings and a couple of features that I think the game is missing for my taste that I would love to see. But it, it all boils down to can they fit it in the memory. Yeah, obviously that's always an always a case and always the issue, sadly. But um, obviously with a game as complex as this, uh, but you know I've talked previously about a counter to sea spray, and uh, I got quite ridiculed for it maybe because everyone's because <laughs> when I came out and said this in Discord and brought my my video out, people presumed because I'd said that that day, that then when the counter came out that I've done that i've campaigned for that but what they don't see is this was being discussed over christmas in playtesting in january and so when mm. the apes see that conversation it's an in-depth conversation and they start asking us well what would you do what would you see i'm definitely gonna put my idea forward because i think I'm not being big headed but i have some good ideas on counters because I, I think about these things quite intensely about the game and about wars and things like that and so oh, i put yeah. my ideas forward now i'm not saying they're gonna go with my idea they might go with someone else's idea or whatever but Ultimately, they're going to come out with something. If we're all talking about it, about how this bot is too powerful, and then we're all talking about how we would counter it, and they're listening, and we know they're listening, then chances are, like I said, they're going to take some sort of action. And that's where I'll make a video. But if people think that I made a video two weeks ago, and in two weeks, they've already decided the counter, made the counter, and then designed it and everything, and then brought it out, well, no, sadly not. I don't have that much input in the game, sadly. Um, no. Just it was a long time coming. Like that would be a process that takes several yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. It was a long time coming. And I think the main problem was simply that people say like, "Oh, you can make an anti sea spray base," which I've made, but we saw this at Goldfire that everyone was making anti Goldfire bases. Nothing else. It wasn't an anti this or anti that. It was anti Goldfire bases, and basically there was only one design, pretty much, that made him less effective. Didn't nullify him, just made him less effective. And we saw everyone using the same design pretty much. And, you know, we don't we want some variety in the game. We want people to have different base designs and be able to do and express themselves with different things. You know, not yeah. just have to say, I've got through that because it's one bot. So, you know, it was uh, overdue, sadly. But, um, but yeah, I'm glad it's come to the game. Hope, hopefully the new court is effective. Like I said, I hope. Uh, doesn't nullify bots that didn't require it. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I've, I've said a few times that I think it needs to be one more build bot, an anti heal or reduce heal. And I think mm -hmm. then we've got that many that there's six and you can't equip all six. So there's something there you're not going to be able to defend against. Maybe even two things because you've got five build bots, six cores. Chances are you'll use two of one at some point. So you leave it open for something else. So that that was my always my vision and my idea that I plugged to the apes is that we need a lot more choice. But uh, yeah, anyway, less of that. I'm excited for it and uh, excited for some variety in the game as always. But yeah, 
Okay, so as we said, so I've sort of written down a sort of sketch on the box that we sort of, you sort of went through and uh, mm. sort of pick your brains a bit. I mean, for those that uh, didn't see your stream, you can go and check that out and go and check out all the ratings. You do, and you and Frank are sort of going depth really on why you guys um, like or don't like them. So uh, we could obviously flick through some of the ones that we agree on. So we both said that Silverboat and Noah were great. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. Uh, the other thing about Silverbolt is obviously the cores. The, uh, the the healing cores nullifies them a bit. The new anti-stun cores nullify them a bit. But that range is crazy. But um, yeah, Sunstreaker, I'm not a big fan of at all. You, you like Sunstreaker, though. I do like Sunstreaker. I like because he doesn't, first of all, his when leveled, uh, I think his ability is every bit as effective as Prowl or Alpha Bravo. But you got to level it. You got to put his core on there to make his ability more powerful. Um, now it takes more time. It's similar to Storm Clash. It, she has fire damage attached to her attack. She's not going to. If it's a stronger target, she's not going to destroy it right then and there. But let the fire damage do its thing. That target will go down as long as it's within her total um, damage that she produces. And uh, Sun Sugar is very similar. That and of course he's a gunner, and I do like my gunners. I have two squads that are made up entirely of gunners. See, I think the problem there is that he could probably can one. He could probably do well in lower zones. He probably can power level. So I could start to see that angle a bit. But for me, again, it's all about that. We talked about in your stream Jetfire and the like. Oh, we can't one shot anymore, and that really mm. nullified him in Prime League Wars. And Sunstreak is the same. That he struggles to one shot at higher levels. And I just think back sort of two years ago, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, but I think you're at a lot of the stage that I was at two years ago, because there's a lot of lots where I was like, Hot Rod is awful. And I know he's had ability level and things like that, but I was like, nope, Hot Rod is awful. Sunstreak is actually pretty good, and a lot of the, bait, the bots that you uh, rated, I thought, yeah, I was actually using that bot two years ago with good effect, at a really good level, um, because obviously that level then was, you know, the highest level in the game, whether it was Cyber or whatever it was back then. Um, mm. But for me, with Prime League, he stopped one-shotting. And that was the reason, again, a lot of war focus, but one of the reasons why I sort of dropped him. Uh, but Grimlock, I've never been a fan of. I just think, again, we talked a bit about this in your stream, but he's just a bit of a glass cannon. Just dies too Yeah, quick. Yeah, he, he may as well have that permanent effect on him all the time. He, you can, If you get him leveled up enough and you have the right core on him, he can one-shot two, maybe three defenses for you before he goes down, but you've got to be quick. You've yeah. got to be quick, and you've got to be make sure you're you're hitting the defenses that are going to do the most damage to him. Otherwise, he's he's not going to last. He's on two of my squads. I use his three and four star, and on squads that I put together solely for helping me grind events, and he is always the first one to, to go down. <laughs> yeah, so similar reasons why I'm not a big fan. Really, I've tried him in Zen Farm in the four star. It's only a mid level bot, but again, he just I just can't rely on him, it just dies, which is a shame. Yeah, we yeah he, could, he could use a buff for sure, he could use a buff, but uh, I have found use for him, so I, I'll, I'll continue to use him. But I'd never take him into war, I'd never, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and then obviously, Hot Rod. Now, if I went for this batch, he would be the bot I'm aiming for, he would be the pick for me. Well, you said the exact mm. opposite. You said he's the one that you avoid. So, if we're soloing, then yeah, I kind of get it. He's not soloing anytime soon. Now, if you're duoing, and I say duoing because you corrected me on your channel, not soloing. <laughs> uh, if he's duoing with two bots, having another bot, uh, if you can add another high DPS bot in there, they can take down HQ 15. Uh, sorry, zone 15. HQ 17s with just two bots, which is crazy to the point where they had to change the ffd cores so that it does affect hot rod but you've got to keep in mind that this is invulnerability so it doesn't matter if you're fighting a hq 17 a hq 18 or a hq 50. Mm. this guy's invulnerable and another bot is un invulnerable which if you think about that that is crazy that, that that's even in the game he does have his uses for sure. I mean, I mean, and if you're like you said, if you're dueling him and another bot, 
like um, Slash or, uh, well, you really don't need to do that with Slash. She's invisible. Um, Cheetor, five-star Cheetor or Elita One, the bots that were classically known for, for soloing, um, you know, but they were still vulnerable if they ran into the wrong position. Yeah, if you have Hot Rod with them, he will definitely help them succeed at higher level bases. Um, my biggest beef with Hot Rod is that, yeah, you, he cannot solo. He can do the ability to himself, but his DPS isn't enough to get him all the way to the HQ. Um, yeah. He doesn't rush. He doesn't soar up to the top. Um, and, you know, I, I wouldn't add him to any of the squads I currently use because they're, you know, they're constructed in such a way to where they're doing exactly what I need them to do, how I need them to do it. And I just don't have a place for Hot Rod. Um so that and, you know, he's responsible for getting Optimus Prime killed. So well, yeah. he, can, he can bite it. Yeah, I agree with that, Fuller. Yeah, I mean, I have a bit of a joke about that. But yeah, it kills me to say I want him, but I definitely do. And uh, mm. yeah, I think, again, you need ability 11 with him. You do need ability 11, but you put him with the likes of Swoop. So very high DPS. And Atari's even put it in the chat that they can even do zone 16 together. That's that's how powerful it is because they are invulnerable, which I can't mm. stress enough. So um, yeah, if you've got the spark and you've got you know you can level into max and you've got a newer really good bot, then it's great for power leveling. Just take him and swoop say into zone sixteen and you're level fifty one bot and that guy will shoot up. But um, yeah, I kind of understand you. You start a point. new new strategy. He loves swoop, and now that you've said that, <laughs> he's going to start pairing those two together every time. Well, but you need ability eleven. You need to pump that spark in, though. But if he gets there and put the G one core on him, honestly, he's absolutely immense. Absolutely immense. Mm. Uh, then batch two. So, so you wasn't a fan of this batch, really, as I sort of remembered. So. Optimus Prime? No, I am a fan of this batch. All right, okay. um, now keep now I I know I know which batch you're on because of I can hear you, but keep in mind I'm watching the stream oh, from my a little bit of lag there, <laughs> so I can't see it yet. But no, I am a fan of batch two. Um batch two was the first one that I pulled from in the hunt for Windblade. I got Skyburst, who has proven to be a fantastic bot, mm. and then I got Windblade. I've not gone back to this batch. Because even though I'd love to have Prime and I would not mind Drift, I, I would I didn't want him years ago, but now I wouldn't mind him. I I, I got no use for Wheeljack. I don't use healers, and I don't want to risk getting Wheeljack and using my five star shards to get Wheeljack. Yeah, I know well, are super important in Prime League, and I know yeah. you gotta have them. But when I grind events, there are no healers to be found. Yeah, I kind of get that again because. About two years ago, I did my cleanup crew video, and the idea was that I sent in Star Saber, I sent in Goldfire and Lita, and that pretty much cleared the base out. So I do Goldfire, I zip around, do three zips, I send Lita in to do a huge damage, and that would obviously help the burn to continue because Goldfire's uh, ability jumps. Then I send yep. Star Saber in the other way, so I'd use Star Saber once, maybe twice if I could, definitely Lita once, Goldfire three times. After that, there wasn't much left. And then it just dropped a walk team, basically. But I didn't need healers because there's nothing left, pretty much. Just fighting outpost bots. That's pretty much yeah. it. Um, and I, and I kind of get that back then, you know. Um, and that's sort of, I think that's why you sort of go similar in case of, you know, tactically taking that defense out, taking that defense out, taking this out. And then what's left is there's not much. Um, but yeah, because of the lack of one shots, if you try and send Windblade in in Prime League, she doesn't one shot and she gets hit on that MSM mine, she'll pretty much be gone soon. She's got great You're health, but but she does one shot uh outside of Prime League. So if you're yeah. zone fourteen and you're grinding an event, she will one shot. I mean, I've got her at fifty eight eleven, so I I'm a big fan of Windblade in grinding events. Yeah, she's great for Zen farming. Cause she has great range. You can take a few defenses out and get behind the HQ. And so, yep. yeah, I'm a big fan of, uh, like I said, outside the walls. So, you know, that's what I said, like, a change of perspective in a way of more just looking at bots that purely leveling. See, Drift mm -hmm. again, I see Drift as just like Grimlock. So, yeah, it can get yeah. about the base, but dies too quick. I mean, his G1 core helps, but he just dies that bit quicker. But 
He okay. does. That, yeah. That's why I'm not big on Drift. I don't dislike him because I could use him in a similar vein to Grimlock, which I do. But he wouldn't be my first choice. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So who would be your pick out this batch if you had to pick one then? Uh, if one that I don't already have? Just in general, just if I said to you, if you had if you had all five to get and you were aiming for one, would it be Windblade, the one you wanted? It would be Windblade, because after I got her, I walked away, moved on to other things. Interesting. Now, if I came back to it, it would be for Prime, but... Yeah, same for me, yeah. If I came back here now, it would be Optimus or nothing, but I really don't want Drift or Windblade. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need another sack bot, and I definitely don't want. I don't like bots that jump, so I, I haven't even got Otis Primal. I had a hundred thousand Shanix and spent mm -hmm. it all on defense cores rather than Otis Primal, and that says it all, really. That says how much wow. I want Otis Primal. <laughs> I used fifty thousand Shanix on Beast Wars Megatron. <laughs> oh my days! No, that's even worse. Old faction, a bot I don't like, and even not even a bot. It's a Decepticon. But, um... Well, I'm a completionist. I mean, and this game has a very Pokemon-esque vibe to it in that you got to collect them all. So I, I couldn't help myself. I was like, I got to do it or my OCD is going to get the better of me. So, and who knows? Maybe we'll he'll become useful someday. Maybe. So on to batch three. So uh, Frankster loves Cheeto. Um, I, do, I don't blame him. Yeah, and I kind of get that he can absolutely you know, smash a base and... Cheeto was in my war team for uh, probably the longest standing bot I've ever had in my war team until about a year ago. And again, that Prime League just really killed him with the recent mm. increases. The MDS, the MDS killed Cheeto, basically. Uh, yeah. And a shame, really. It was a really good cleanup bot. And I think I think up to recently, Grindtown still used him to take out Combiners. Um, but I convinced him to take him out. <laughs> I just think there's oh, other bots that can great. do it just as good. Like Laser Optimus. So Laser Optimus can take out Combiners just as good as Cheeto, but he's got that health to back him up. And again, I'm talking from the perspective of people that have got all these bots, so they have a choice. Where I get that sometimes uh, if you've got 5-star Cheeto and you don't have Laser Optimus, and, you know, Cheeto is a very, very good bot to do that for you. Um, Fireflies are one-shot. I know you love your jets from what I could gather. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Again, lacks a bit of one shot in prime, so it goes down in my estimations. But biggest surprise for me was Springer. I I'm Ooh. a big fan of Springer. If I went to back to this batch, he would be the one for me. He'd be my pick. I could use him. I can, because I even did it uh, in the podcast episode 17. I, my initial thing is I got no use for Springer. I don't have a squad where he fits. I'm just kind of putting him somewhere for the sake of putting him somewhere because he is a five star. But if I had to create a squad and I had to create a use for Springer, I would first have to get a bot like uh, Windblade or Alita who jumps and uh, get her where I want them. And then I'd have to follow her with Springer to heal them and then back them up to do whatever it is they're trying to do, whether it's take out a particular defense or take out the HQ. Uh, but then well, I'm going to want to keep them safe because they won't have taken on everything. So that's when tracks would get added to the mix and tracks would give them cover. But then I'm also going to want to make them more deadly while they're out there. So that brings Inferno into the mix to increase the damage they're going to do whilst they are doing whatever it is that they are doing. But then that also brings in the idea, well, now we need to bring in Rodimus Prime because once you activate his ability, they're going to do so much more damage than they were doing prior to with Inferno now affecting their uh, their uh, their attack. Um, and I got stopped myself, and so I just created a new squad. You know? So, yeah, I can find a use for Springer. I just don't want to. Well, it took someone <laughs> else. It took someone else to show me something. I was a bit in that mindset. It was very, if you do a backdoor with Cup, yeah, he's a great bot, things like that. And I was like, well, I'm not a big fan of the backdoor strategy really anymore. It's very hard to pull off really now, I think. But it's still a lot of cons that use it. And it took someone else to show me. And I was like, that is genius. And that is, so you get those bases that everyone makes where it's got the, the V at the bottom. And you drop your bots and some go that way and some go that way. Now, in war, that is a killer. In war, that is a recipe for disaster. And so you've got to work out a way to keep your bots going one way and not the other. 
So I now I use C spray, but before C spray I had to take out key structures or drop blasters, minions, and sometimes they wouldn't take them out quick enough, and the bots would split, and it, it caused yep. drops because your healers are running all over. This guy, I'd love to say who it was, I can't remember, but dropped Springer on one side with Flaxe, eh? took out the structures that are going to make your bots split, like off the landing pad, dropped the bots on the other side, and just zipped Springer over, and all of a sudden, all your bots are in one place. And I was like, that, that is genius. That is a very simple solution to a very big problem. Mm. Uh, I, I was just like, yeah, you know what? That, just for that reason, I want Springer now. Just to solve that problem. So, you know what? It won't get my war team over on my war team right now. But if I get that particular base, we know how the meta changes and comes right round again. And if those sort of bases, we still see them occasionally. If that base oh, yeah. comes back round to bite us again, I've got a solution. It's like, yep, I've got him. He goes in there. Problem solved. And, you know, and that's the advantage of being a top guy, a top player, that you want to have them options where the meta changes, you're ready for it already. So, um, yeah, I'd love I'd love Springer. I really would. Mm. Uh, and Jazz, I just think it's too costly. I mean, you guys talked about it, and I think you guys sort of agreed that he's all right at one use, but after that, it gets a bit costly. Yeah, he's too expensive. Um, my strategy with Jazz is if I were to get Jazz, I would put him on a squad because he's five star, so his DPS is going to be there. Um, but I wouldn't use his ability until I'd use the abilities of my other gunners, and the costs between the you know, however many of them became even, and then I would use his ability somewhere that is like, okay, I need this is a nuisance. I need to take this out, but I wouldn't use it right away because there's no guarantee he's going to take out enough targets depending on what zone i'm in to justify his cost yeah well, i talked to i think it was a grind time maybe or even text i was talking to about back in the day back in the hq 16 days the golden rule was keep your defenses so much apart so it just can't hit them and he right. was like the bot so now when you think about sea spray or gold fire last year he was the one bot where you thought You've got to defend against that. You cannot have him doing that. And it was around the time when this batch came out. And uh, it was absolutely unbelievable. But again, mm. he's, uh, he's just dropped from the meta a bit because he can't one-shot anymore again at high levels. And you can I can understand that some bots can be comboed, but nine ability points to combo, that's expensive. Even if you add a four-point ability on that, it's 13 ability points. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, that's that's a lot. That is that is too much. It's almost it's almost half of what most players start with. I'd say I yeah. couldn't do it. I agree. And then uh, Ultra Magnus. He's not the best. He's not the worst. I like him. He's a little tanky. He has a little bit more deep, a little bit more health than uh, some bots do that have his same range. He has a ranged ability, which. Can't one-shot everything, but in the right zone, can one-shot certain things. His ability could do with more range, but he does the job that I need him to do. And that's just another bot on the field that can take out a key structure from a distance, whilst grinding events. Mm, but he's, he's not... You can't solo him. If that's, no, okay, right, no, you I've can't never... solo him, but he does fit well in a, in a events grinding squad. Yeah, again, I can sort of see that, the, the tankiness and the DPS. His stats are really good. But it's, it, this is one of those bots that I was talking with Tex about this, that on paper looks amazing, but in practicality oh, yeah. just isn't. His, his, uh, his uh, ability, because of the rocket, so the initial damage he does is, is great, it's all right, but the rockets aren't consistent. So if he can one shot X, then he's, he has to make sure that he's well over that power. So say for argument's sake, his one shot does two and a half thousand damage, and that defense is two thousand four hundred. There are times it will leave a slight bit of health. Yeah. And then you've also got to consider when in terms of war. So I said about keeping your bots together, keeping your team walking together, not deviating. He has the same range as jets. He has that slightly ranged attack. So if you're putting him on a ta on a team with tanks like uh, Hotspot, for example, Hotspot's melee, so he'll get up and close, and he'll walk X way. He'll walk that way, and you know where he's going to walk. Ultra mm. Magnus, he'll just walk off that way. 
Uh, and that's the killer for me. That's the big one. And another reason why I don't like Skylinks for the exact same reason. Great bot, great ability. I mean, Ultra Magnus is all right, but the big, the big one for me is Pathing. And um, yeah, I just don't like him. I, I honestly put him as one of the worst five stars in the game. Bottom five. Honestly, that's how, that's how low I rate the guy. Honestly. Mm -hmm. But I kind of get, well, you know, it's tank. I kind of get that. Yeah, it it all it all depends on, and it you know boils down to personal preference. And again, it depends on what is your what 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 do you need this bot to do for you, and can he do it? And for my needs, for my purposes, and how I play the game, he does what I need him to do. Um, does he die? Yeah, on occasion, <laughs> but I but I take out the HQ every time. So you know he plays a role, and he plays his role well. And once I advance, he may find himself out of my meta. Um, but um, you know, but like so for the time being, I would I would take him over Springer. So if you had the choice between Ultra Magnus, Pipes, and Hotspot, is he, he bought with a barrel? Pipes, Ultra Magnus, and Hotspot. No, no, oh, Ultra yeah. Magnus is not in that squad because if I've got so Ultra so Hotspot and Pipes. Are my two rush bots they're my two tank bots they're the ones that are going to rush out front soak up damage and then that leaves all the bots that need to be kept safe gunners or aerial bots you know and and i didn't mention this earlier when we were recording uh, the botcast but i am an old school player i take strategies that were put into the meta in the days when one star bots were still relevant and i still implement those strategies they have they work for me um that and i'm like i mentioned earlier i'm a very in the box thinker it takes takes a minute for me to start thinking yeah maybe there is something to this so i just stick with what i know um so ultra magnus would not be a part of that because i've already got an aerial bot in that spot that has better range than he does and has more precision than he does but if you had on you could only choose one of those three. Oh, if i could own one of those three hot spot and then second, pipes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd, well, uh, yeah, I'd probably put pipes over Ultra Magnus, maybe. And I hate pipes. Mm. <laughs> so that says a lot, only, really. But uh, pipes only gets over on Ultra Magnus because, or because a he does have highest base health in the game now, alongside of Ironhide and Trailbreaker. But b because I do plan to make pipes an A squad bot once I get his five star. Whereas Ultra Magnus is never going to be an A squad bot. Got the five star. You got the five star version? I don't. No. Oh no. I the uh, pipes are ultra. I don't have either. Oh, right, but you wouldn't. So if you, if you pulled five star Ultra Magnus, he wouldn't be in that squad. No. 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 He would be. He he would go in the same squad that four star Ultra Magnus is in now, and then four star Ultra Magnus would get bumped down to a okay. lower squad. Cool. Right, and out of these, Cheeto, pick of the batch. Cheetor's pick of the batch. Yeah, I'd say Cheeto and Springer, but like I said, I've got to have different use for in wars. But I kind of get that you can use Cheeto in wars, you can use him for power leveling, you can use him in events, and I kind of oh, yeah. get that, you know, he's a bit of a jack of all trades, and he's really good, and until you hit them MDS, and it's a shame, really, because he was amazing. I was devastated when I pulled him, but then I was really good, uh, really happy with it, it was a really good bot, but... Um, yeah. Well, Cheetor, so one of the things that hurt Cheetor in my eyes, even though I still use him, I still love him, is that at one time, the Amalgamous Prime Core not only enhanced your DPS while in alt mode, but it also healed you for uh, either a regular, a, a steady amount of healing every so many intervals. Yeah. Or it would, or it would, for a percentage of the damage you did, I forgot what, it yeah. no longer does that. No, it does. When you, no, when you read the description, it's it's very very much not there anymore. I'm on Amalgamous, he sure. Yeah. Could have swore it does. I think I've got mine on Laser Optimus. Because I went and looked at it two or three times, and I said, what? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't this well, yeah? While in alt mode, increase all damage, including abilities, by fifty fourteen point five percent on mine, and restores one percent right. health every half a second. Well, what in the world? Because I've looked at mine a dozen times. Okay, well, I just embarrassed myself in front of the world. <laughs> you had me thinking. I'm like, I think I did it on a nerf without you even knowing. I'm like, have I got it wrong here? Eh? But yeah, yeah. Let me pull it up real quick. If 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 mine's different, I'm gonna flash it in front of the camera. Some something is amiss. 
have you put the wrong core on? <laughs> you hope not. Have you put an attack yeah, core on him or something? Oh, no, that's very much the core. That's very much it. That's the one that you want if if you uh Yeah. You want that on uh on uh Cheetor, you want that on Sentius Magnus, you want that on Strafe, you want that on um uh Rotor Storm? Yeah. That's the core right there, buddy. Definitely. Twenty seven percent. My phone is so old and slow. <laughs> so uh... But uh, but that was the core, and I have that core on Cheetor. I just I could swear the healing aspect of it had disappeared from the description the last time I looked. But um, but another thing that's great about Cheetor though is if you take him into raids, if you go to the top, the most difficult raid zone, and you can get him to the Titan, he will ruin that Titan's day because the Titan cannot kill him. He's he heals too fast when he's uh, applying damage. Yeah. And if you let's say you have the five and the four star, and even the three star, or even the two star, and you just keep spamming the Titan with Cheetor, well, that's gonna be a good day. <laughs> yeah, I, I like using Cheetor in raids along with Slash. So rush yeah. to that HQ. I'm not a big fan of raids at all, but if I can do this, I actually have a bit of enjoyment. And I literally just rush to the HQ uh with Optimus. Put Blaster's minions down and then just go Cheetor slash, Cheetor slash, Cheetor slash, Cheetor slash. Just keep going at it. Yep. Cheetor slash, Cheetor slash. Yep. And yep. it takes it down. The damage they do is incredible. And I've tried loads of times to put Cheetor and Slash in a team, but they just don't work. I don't, I don't know why. No, just don't work in a war team. I'll be. Yeah, you're right. It's I, I swear it was gone from the description because I was simply going, what? Where Didn't that used to heal? But it's, it's back. <laughs> I'll chalk that up to being a bug in the game that only I caught. <laughs> I, after this stream, I'd go and check your Cheeto and make sure you got the right core on him. It might be that you put the wrong core on. I, I just looked at it. I just <laughs> right. checked. It's clearly on him. We're, cool. we're, we're yeah, okay. That amalgamous, that amalgamous healing and his own ability healing keeps him alive in a lot of a lot of the zones apart from Bram Zone. That's a problem. Yeah. So, oh, okay, batch four. So batch four, I mean, this says a lot, really. So didn't you rate this the lowest batch in the game? I, I definitely rated it one of the lowest, one of the lowest batches. I don't know that I rated it the lowest, but, and it wasn't because I don't like the bots that are in here. I would take Elite One all day long. I mean, if you said any five-star of the bot in the game right now, which one would you take that you don't already have? Elite One. Wow. See, um, two years ago, I'd agree with you. Two years ago, I wanted Elita so much. Chased Elita, and I got uh, Prowl first, or Brawl. So, yeah, we're having to show the cons, because literally, I pulled this entire batch chasing Ratchet, which oh, I know wow. you don't like him. So No, no. and um, that's one of the reasons I won't go back to this batch. As much as I'd love to have Elita or Blaster, I'm not going to risk getting a Ratchet. See, um, I was the same. I was saying, I'm not going this batch because I don't want Ratchet. I do not want a chance Ratchet. So I had Prowl, I had uh, Sludge or Straxus, and I had Blaster. Those are the three I wanted. And it was 50-50 between Elita and Ratchet. I was like, I am not going back to that batch. Not a chance. And well, then... I ended up with Sludge my first time pulling from this. Yeah, I and, got uh, Prowl, Blaster, uh, and Sludge, yeah. I said, uh, I said, I'm not going to do... I mean, I use them as a meat shield, but beyond that, I don't have a lot of use for them, especially since honeycomb bases. You still see them, but they're easy to overcome, even without sludge. And then the second one I got was Prowl. And Prowl, I mean, I use him prominently, so I was very happy to have that. I got so excited, I scared my cat, and she bit me. Uh, <laughs> so I was very happy to have Prowl. But by the time I was ready to pull another five-star... My first instinct was to come to this, but by then I had decided I didn't have any use for healers. I used to be okay with healers. Now I got no use for them. So by the time that came around, I was like, eh, I am thinking I'm going to go someplace else. And then I started pulling from uh, batch three. And I kept pulling back from batch three until the five-star, the five-year anniversary event. And I got Firefly, who was the bot I was hunting from that batch. I was like, okay, I finally got after Springer and Cheetor, the crystal from the event gave me Firefly. 
I can now I can move on. And now we're in badge nine. Yeah, good badge. But we'll come to that. But um, yeah. And like I said, for a long time, I didn't want Ratchet. I was dead against it. And then the MDS came out. I chased Ratchet. I went to chase Wheeljack and uh, pulled him first time. Like, right, that's me. I'm done. That's it. Leave that batch. I'm done with batch two. That was it. Luckily yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. Because I was chasing them too. But I, I just like, you know what? I'd love to see in a couple of years' time whether you're at that stage and you were like, you know what was a, I was exactly the same, dead against healers. And I came up in them top levels. I was like, yeah, I need my healers. And you're going back chasing them. Because oh, sure, uh, I, eventually. I think so, honestly. Um, you know. Yeah. But uh, I kind of understand, again, so when you said that, and I can see a few people in the chat going, he's crazy, what is he talking about? But when you think of it in this way, when you think of it as bots that can do zone 14 leveling, say, there's no way a Ratchet, no way Ratchet is soloing zone 12 or zone 10. So I can understand that. If you put it purely as soloing bots, Prowl ain't soloing anything. It's just... Too costly the ability to repeat and he's going to die. Straxus or Sludge, great HP, uh, great HP, but awful DPS. He's got to time out if you try and use him. So there's only two bots in there that can solo and Soundwave and Blast and it's be high level. So I kind of understand that and, and you, from that perspective that if you're just going for events and bots that can power level, this is actually probably, yeah, a poor batch in that way. Yeah, because you've only got one real choice. Hmm. Um, two, if you count Blaster, because Blaster, I think in the right circumstances, Blaster can solo as well. Um, but Sludge, uh, i got no use for Sludge. I use him. I have him as a meat shield. And then Prowl, I'm very happy with Prowl. I definitely wanted him as a member of one of my squads. Um, but, but with there being two batches in, two bots in here that I... Ah, not really. Um, it's kind of a, it, you know, it's a 30-20 split. And the 20% of the boss I don't like, I don't I don't like. So nah, that's I why that. I, would, I would not pull from this batch again. I get that. But uh, for me, Blaster, Soundwave, is probably one of the top five stars in the game. I'm oh, that, yeah. That Without high. question. Even, I've got a five-star Elita. I mean, just to show you, to give you an idea. And we sort of touched upon this earlier, but I just want to sift through going, 11, 11, give you an idea, 11, 11, 11, you get the idea, Elita, 10, Prowl, 9, you know, two bots in that batch that I don't bother to spark because they're, they're, they're a lot less relevant than what they used to be, really, but in terms of power leveling, in terms of events, I kind of get Elita, I get that, mm. I do, like, yeah, absolutely immense bot. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, my four-star elite is the only bot in my collection that is 6511. She's the only one. I don't blame you at all. Cheetor is getting there. Five-star Cheetor is getting there. But, uh, but she's the only because I knew that's my power leveling bot. Once I got yeah. her, and you should have... I'll have to send you a link to the video. The reaction uh, when I got her, and I got her from a premium. Christmas. Wow. And I just lost my bananas. <laughs> <laughs> that was me when I pulled Wheeljack. Because I, I, I had all five bots to go. I was like, right, here we go. I want Wheeljack. I was thinking, ooh, two, three pulls maybe I'll get him. So when I pulled him, yeah, I lost it. And then obviously I've done my video where I pulled mine wipe on the China server. And that was the exact opposite. <laughs> 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 but yeah. Uh, so on to batch five. So patch five is one of those weird patches for me. That... I don't think there's a there's not a bot bot in this that I would call a bad bot. I mean the the one I find that I would have the hardest time using is Snarl, but even he's not bad. He's a tank bot. He's got health. Mm. His ability's not bad. It's it's a situational ability, but. All of these, I can see myself putting these bots somewhere and making good use of them. See, I pulled five star Snarl last when they did the five star for five years, mm -hmm. and I was devastated. On the I stream, remember. I was like, "Oh, Snarl, yay! He's he's 
now at level 51 to give you an idea is this a poor man's cheater not many many cores you can really put on him you can't put flak or anything on him and his pathing's not great and ew, i'm just not a big fan at all but yeah. this is one of them batches that's really bizarre to me is that i keep coming back to it for different reasons so at one time i came thinking snow is amazing back when the days when i said about a couple of years ago snow is absolutely amazing as a cleanup bot I wanted to snarl, but didn't want to chance the other bots then people were doing the russian smash and i seen rodimus prime i was like wow the amount of damage that rodimus is doing with that ability i want rodimus then russian smash went away then people were using warpath i was like whoa warpath can take all these build bots out they're no longer a problem yeah i want warpath and then everyone using healing build bots and he sort of went away a bit and then yeah. i've never been a big fan of percept i've always preferred blades so he's one of the ones i'm not really that happy about and then i thought about pulling rc and having rc and rook and reducing the cost of using rook's repeat repeat um usage you know if you've got two bots could pop out pulse reduce yeah. the cost down so rc is probably the one bot i'd go back to now and now i'm thinking now there's these new build bots and the fact that my titan's one level less than everyone else's because one week i just forgot to do my titan uh assault less of that um but warpath can actually hit the opponent's titan with his ability now that's a big plus for me so i'm going back to warpath again now i just see that every few months i go back going yeah i want this guy and then a few months later it's like no no i want that guy so I wouldn't say like right now I want all five, but at some point in the game, one of these bots has been really relevant. Yeah. And I still continue to use Warpath prominently. His four and three star. I have I, I pair him with uh uh Hound, a bot that both you and I are are fond of. Um and I use them to take out laser turrets or beam lasers, excuse me. I use them to take out rocket launchers. Inferno was on a squad with them, so if I'm in a higher level, if I'm in a higher zone than I typically take them into, I just activate Inferno's ability and then spam their ability on two or three targets as quick as I can. And it's very effective because alone, they can't do it. And alone, it becomes too expensive. But together, it works. And with Hound's ability sp doing spread damage, it, you don't have to use his ability as often if the targets you're after are fairly close. You can use his ability one or two times and then use Warpath to clean up the mess that he made. It's a very, very good strategy, and I've, I've been using it quite a bit. Again, for event grinding, it's an amazing strategy. But what's interesting, though, is that you're not soloing with RC. You're not soloing with Perceptor. You're not soloing with Optimus Prime. Warpath unlikely being a gunner in low health. So mm. maybe only Snarl is the one bot you can solo with, and that's the one bot that you don't like, really, and didn't really rate. And yeah, I think there's four bots in there that you can't power level with, but you still like this batch, though. Yeah, I like because, again, there's not a bad bot in it. Every other batch that I looked at had at least one bot that I was. Nah, X. At least one. This one. The only one that I would I wouldn't X him, I would just put a circle around him, is Snarl. But the rest of them, I would use prom I do use prominently. I have four star versions of all of these bots, and I have all of them on a squad of some kind. Perceptor is the bot you want from this badge, if nothing else. Because you take him into a raid and you hack those thunder towers, well that raid base is gonna have a bad day. So yeah, so, again, you see, I don't participate in raids at all. I hate raids with a passion so again it's just that different angle of looking at these bots and saying like well listen yeah if you're in wars i'd probably write this batch off mm. maybe the rc i'd push a war path but that is it's two and five for me that's why it's not worth going for but mm. if you're in raids and i agree then perceptor is king in in this batch and oh, definitely yeah. something to be for. so if that's something that you like doing if you really like raids and you know, it's something you participate on trying to get the most points in. And I kind of get one in Perceptor. And Texas is a big advocate for Perceptor. I just don't see it personally. I just don't get it. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of people that like it. But um, if you had to pick one, it might be RC mine. Uh, from this batch, if I had to pick one, um, 
I would pick Warpath first. You know what I'm about to I, say? I'm going to chain man to Warpath, actually. Yeah. Because, yeah. I, like I said, I use him prominently, and I would be very keen to replace my four-star Warpath with the five-star, and then filter my four-star down to where the three-star is, and then and so on and so forth. Yeah. I I agree with Warpath, actually. I think it's an all-around good bot, and could be good in wars as well, so yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, Legacy 6. So... Obviously, first aid. Not a big fan of, obviously. No, yourself. but if I, if I had to pick a healer that I, I wanted to be stuck with, I think first aid would be the one because his, uh, without wrong, he's the only one whose healing does spread healing. Uh, and then I, I'm fond of his drones. I do like his drones. See, I'm smiling because two years ago, when I started using healers, the healer I used, it was uh, first aid. So you can see there, just to prove I'm not speaking BS, this is where he left off. Level 61 as a four star. My ratchet is down here somewhere, 58. And then wheeljack's even lower. To give you an idea on how I prioritized um, healers around here somewhere, wheeljack, but you get the idea. I can't even find him now. Yeah. But. Um, yeah. Oh, he's there. There we are. He's level there he is, yeah. 57. So, yeah. So, yeah. First aid was my bot of choice when I had that cleanup crew and started needing healers. But then soon realized I need something stronger. And that's when I started chasing Ratchet and when I uh, started chasing Wheeljack. And I think that it's quite interesting that you've chosen exactly the same. That, you know, at that point, again, I didn't want to use healers, but I needed to start. I was like, right, well, I'm going to use first aid. And. Yeah, I just find that really amusing. That, you know, you're at the same stage maybe that I was at that point. But um, yeah, you like Sandstorm as well, I believe. I do like Sandstorm. I think Sandstorm is uh, an underrated bot. His first of all, he he was I think he was the first. No, he was the second triple changer whose abilities could stack, um, and both of which very well. So if you send him in with his toxic effect and then land healing on top of it it increases the damage and that's very useful depending on what defenses are around you but then if you rush in with your healing and you're trying to save a bot that's in trouble similar to springer you can heal that bot but then you can drop your toxic on him and you can increase his healing now i'm just telling you what the ability does we all know what the ability does but that is immensely useful yeah. especially again now in prime league Probably useless, but if you get into, like I said, event grinding, PvP, that is a very, very useful ability, especially if you're trying to push the boundaries of what your team can do. The area damage he does in conjunction with healing the bots that are in that area will just help you bridge the gap from, say, zone you know, 12 to 13, if that's where you are in the game. Just a bit expensive for me. That's a big and precision, yeah. But uh, if you're taking out the right uh, buildings at the right times, you can kind of work around it. Um, but you can't always plan for that. Yeah. And then I use Rustless quite a bit in my old cleanup crew. So is that the same for you? I, I'm kind of, I'm really, I'm fifty fifty on Rust Dust because I like her as a bot. I like her ability, raining damage down on target and uh, causing you know fire damage and she does stun with her primary ability with her primary uh attack similar to bumblebee so i like her but i've yet to use her in a way that i thought oh man if it wasn't for rust dust you know yeah. uh, she's just kind of there <laughs> so yeah i use her nation i use everybody in elimination but as for as far as grinding events, she's not even on my one of my squads. See, I think she could be massively underrated in wars. There's so many one shots that can't quite one shot, and for that cost, I think could be epic. Mm -hmm. But then you got a healing core and a bit on the fence, like you said, a bit the same. And I think she could be good in certain situations, very good. But in some, meh. Yeah. And then I was surprised at Goldfire. Not a fan of Goldfire, or no? I, I, it's not that I'm not a fan of him. I just, he's, I, I mean, he's a tank bot. You know, he has health, 
but he doesn't have as much health as the other tank bots that I would prefer to use. You know, well, like, there's a reason for that. Uh, hot bot, Ironhide. Now, I know his primary fu- uh, purpose in life is to pop out posts and cause damage while he's doing it. Um, and in my level, he would probably be immensely useful. I'm not going to lie. He would probably be immensely useful. But I haven't bothered to try him yet. And when I do use him in elimination mode, I don't, I don't put the resources into leveling him. And because I have, you know, at my level, I still have precious few resources. So I'm putting them into the bots that I actively use. And I see how, how, how much you think of him yeah. uh, with 6510 <laughs> there. But uh... <laughs> see, the key there is that damage. I mean, he struggles a bit in Zen because what he needs is you need to use the ability and then he even needs to, you need to let that burn. Right. So in that time, though, because he is quite tanky, but not tanky enough, he'll die. Right. So you even need a combiner, or you need to let him die, or something. But you've got to give him that 12 seconds. Do whatever you've right. got to do to give him that 12 seconds. But if you can use Goldfire and put a combiner down, my word, the amount of damage he does is absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. 5k damage. This guy will burn down on a zone 14. I, I have this guy in a zone 14 team i use him to take out all the base let him die if you put vec if you put um liege on him you'll get even more damage out of it and then oh, yeah. i drop a couple of bots doesn't matter what because all they've got to do is take out the outpost bots and the titan usually helps as well especially in resource raids mm. he's honestly he can solo a zone 14 as in take it all out but then you've got to have another bot that's going to finish the base off if that makes sense, because he'll do everything. He won't burn the HQ down, but he'll literally burn everything else down. Gotcha. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think he's a good bot. I mean, I was excited when he was introduced, um, but because he does have a little bit of a lack of health for a tank bot, he just doesn't do what I need him to do. What I need him to do is go out there and just be that meat shield. Well, yeah, he's not going to do that for you. He's not. No. Nope. But if you look at it as he's another Windblade, where you're going to take out key structures and do damage in between. So I've got the four star there at 60, 10, uh, 69, sorry. And even that does three and a half thousand damage, even at 69. Mm. So absolutely incredible. If you want him to pop out posts, like you said, and you want him to take out key structures and do just tons of damage, honestly, honestly, it's absolutely immense. This this is my go-to bot when I was around you know, your level. So I'd honestly I'd look into him. Uh, try and go and use him. In some zone 30 battles. I mean, I have a funny story. Goldfire was the first four star bot I ever got from a uh, wow. from a chance event. Wow. Yeah, it was a it was a sixty it was a six hundred thousand dollar chance event. We had all sixty crystals. I got the two, three, and the four star within the first four crystals. And wow. you cannot imagine the shrill of my voice. <laughs> I'm, I'm, but then I never used him. What level is he now? Uh, 40. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I never used... I got all the times excited. I never used him. You, uh, I am literally going to hound you about this. <laughs> well, you, honestly, you need to lower 40, that guy. Honestly. When I got him to 40, and I compared him to other tank bots I had at the time that were of the same level, and I saw that there was a significant difference in his health versus yeah. the other tank bots, I thought, I'm not going to use that. Yeah. He's going to die. Yeah, if you think about it in that way... No, he's not that. He's not a sort of bot. But if you want someone to do damage, he's probably the best in the game. Honestly, mm. that's how far it goes in just pure damage. Incredible. Mm. I mean, the MSM mines don't help, but in Zone 14, where there's very few HQ17s at that level, maybe that have, and they have the MSM mines, then yeah, it's an absolute field day for him. But yeah, I'd love to look into it because it's absolutely incredible. If I look into one bot out of out of this conversation, it will be it will be hot, uh, uh, Goldfire. I was gonna say, yeah. If it is, I would honestly say to you, that is the yeah. one you should look into. Definitely, he's. I mean, like I said, he's a bit of a a mute point for me now. Now he's been sort of countered. I agree with it at the time, and it was a shame. But for years, he was such a good bot for me that oh, I yeah. would I wouldn't be at the level I am now without him. That is honestly how far I would go in how good he was. Uh, get a power leveling, uh, get me through wars, uh, Zen farming, and everything else. Like I've, I am not bothered that I've had to shelf him because I got so much value out of him for what I invested in him. Then, yeah, honestly, absolutely incredible, honestly. 
Uh, and then batch seven, we're back to cons again, which again says a lot. Um, so, I mean, Dirge or Blades was immense before the the new cores came out. Uh, yeah. Do you still use Blades? I didn't use him that much in the first place. Um, elimination mode and occasionally in raids. But my Blades is level 40. He didn't oh. fit in with, with the strategy that I like. I like Blades, and I'm actually surprised at myself for not using him more than I do. But he doesn't fit in with the strategies that I that I typically go for when grinding events. I don't know how he can. That that's like saying I don't want a bot that takes half the base out. Because <laughs> yeah. it literally does. Well, it, it's just I mean, what uh, what really stops me is I don't want to put the resources into it because in my mind, yeah, the resources I have have to go to this bot, and then they have to go to this bot, and then they have to go to this bot. I've got this whole master plan mapped out in my mind. You know, that culminates in my A squad being entirely made of five stars at level 65, 10, or 11, and Blades just isn't on the A squad. So, because of that, he, you know, he, I haven't, I, I don't, I haven't even given him a chance. And I feel bad for Blades. I really do. Well, for Explosions <laughs> put, I want to cry. <laughs> Honestly, he's absolutely immense. Honestly. Again, oh, I another know bot. I, I have seen you and several other players just wreak havoc with Blades. Oh, yeah. And I sit there and think to myself, I almost feel bad for the guy they're attacking. Yeah, honestly. Um, Immense. But uh, yeah, he just, hasn't, he just hasn't got worked in yet. He will get worked in eventually, if for no other reason, in a raid squad, a dedicated raid squad. Yeah. Just haven't gotten around to it yet. Even just for raids. Honestly, absolutely immense. Laser oh, Optimus? Yeah. Uh, I like Laser Optimus. I like him a lot. I... Sh I haven't leveled mine yet. Uh, he's 40. Every bot I get goes to 40, and then they sit there until I'm ready for them. But when I do level him to 40, he's going to be accompanied by Impactor or Sentius Magnus or both. Because Good I boss. think those three together would yeah. be unfair. Yeah, I agree. So I have to do it. Yeah, well, <laughs> I had Sentius in my team a long time. I gave him on your level, and um, I I've chased the five-star when that, when that came out, when he got buffed. Absolutely right. immense. Incredible. Really incredible. Yeah. He's in my war team now. Blades oh, yeah. and Armada, uh, Megatron, or, uh, Laser Optimus, or Dirge, whatever. Uh, both mm -hmm. in my war team even now. Um, Starscream, Jetfire, you love your jets, so I presume you love them. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, and, but actually, uh, so my A squad consists of four aerial bots, and Jetfire is not among them because the four that are on there, their ability damage exceeds... Uh, what jet fires is uh, if you're looking just base to base. So my aerial bots on the A squad, strafe, um, uh, skydive, uh, storm clash, and Cybertron jet fire because his ability is just a smidge stronger. So jet fire is on the B squad um, may get replaced by five star firefly because I'm finally leveling his ability. But I do I do love me some jets and I do love me some jet fire. I'm pretty sure Jetfire has the most, the highest singular damage to one target, but he has no, no that, that a, he has no AOE. Even ability eleven AOE is, AOE is rubbish. No, he doesn't. But that's what I take into consideration. What can they do to a single target? So if you look at, so if you take uh, Storm Clash and, and Jetfire, you put them side by side. Initially, Jetfire will, may yeah. look like he has more damage, but then you take into account the, the fire damage. Yeah, from yeah, Christ right. Stars. Yeah, yeah. So, and then Cybertron Jetfire, same thing. His ability is just a smidge stronger when you're comparing apples to apples. And then Strafe, well, that's Sentius Magnus whilst floating yeah. in the sky. So, you know, all day long will I have Strafe on my A squad because he takes out three targets before he goes back down. Um, and then Skydive, um, again, very, very, it takes longer for his target to go down. But it will go down. Yeah, so you're right there. Yeah, it's more the burn effect that I was thinking about. Yeah, so Jetfire has the highest singular damage, as in instant damage, sorry. So, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you talk about burn over time, then, yeah, there's a lot of bots. But when you start to put things like the build bot cores, uh, the healing build bots, things like that, or even um, the not rejuvenate self-repair cores on defenses, then uh, those obviously affect like a skydive and like a storm clash. Uh, but yeah, storm clash. I I use skydive to good effect when the HQ level goes up. So when I used to run jets, all of a sudden HQ seventeen comes out. You can't one shot anymore. Skydive would come in, 
he would one shot until I'd level my other jets up. Then I'd level him up. And then when my war team was at the stage it is now, I used to start leveling uh, Skydive up in the meantime, ready for the next HQ. But um, I don't think he'd be able to do it on the next HQ. I don't think he'd be able to one shot HQ18. I just mm -hmm. think that because of all the and all the healing things we've got in the game right now and things like that, it's a oh, bit yeah. of a shame. But yeah, super damage, incredible. But um, yeah, back on this anyway. So, Tarantulas and Rhinox. If I pulled his five star buddy, he would get lots of usage. Immense. Because I have seen you, I've seen Hoist, I've seen everybody just just wreak havoc. Yeah. With just Rhinox. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I'd love to, I would love to have a five-star Rhinox. I'd love it. And then, lastly, Breakneck or Smokescreen? I do like what they can do to outpost bots. Oof, yeah. That is the biggest... That is, that is, if I were to put a Smokescreen on my squad, it would be for that purpose. Yeah. I would send somebody out there to pop those outposts, and then I would just pop them off. You know? I'd be, uh, you know, I'd be uh, Mr. Rogers up there, <laughs> Hello, neighbor. <laughs> well, hopefully, like I said shortly, I can show you some uh, some battles with him, how I use him uh, to level yeah. him, and uh, he's he's absolutely crazy. Honestly, like I use him for that in wars, but he can still solo bases. But we'll go through that um, shortly enough. And then batch A. Now, for me, this is maybe the joint best batch in the game, along with batch seven. And honestly, I, again, I don't think you can pull a bad bot. Now, you and Frankster really don't rate Bumblebee, and we talked about this in well, your he stream. Does. He he'll take a Bumblebee. He well, he doesn't he doesn't love Bumblebee. Yeah. He's he could make him work. Is was his belief? He's like I could make him work. I just wouldn't want to. My take is I'm not pulling from this badge because I want nothing to do with him. Oh, he's immense. Absolutely I'd immense. Love Swoop. I'd love to have Impactor. I'd love to have Rook. I'd love to have Sea Spray. But God forbid if I pulled it and the first one I got was Bumblebee. <laughs> See, I don't want Swoop. I don't rate him because, again, two years ago at that level, I wanted a four-star four Swoop was amazing. And I'd love yeah. a five-star Swoop. And that's where when the community vote came out and Swoop was voted, I was like, what? What have you done? Why? I just the damage in terms of prime league is it just stays in the air too long, you get shot down. The damage is okay, but with healing bill bots, things like that, they just heal again because his damage, although it's huge, is slow. And so mm. they just heal again pretty much. So it's very ineffective. But as an outpost bot, wow. Oh yeah. He's one of my outpost bots. Yeah. And also outside of Prime League, and this comes back to uh, being a few tiers down and being event driven. He is a fantastic bot for event grinding. He can solo a zone like the depending on what level you put him on or where he's at, the Frankster's swoop can solo. I think he's up to where he can solo with zone twelve base now with swoop. As long as the base is, is constructed in in, in 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 such a way. Yeah. If he can pop him, bases with swoop. Yeah, I do it in Zen farming. I can solo with him. If it's a very, if it's a base where it's split in sort of three sections so to speak so two side sections and a middle section i'll yep. do swoop in the middle a couple of times pathing wide gets mobility points back it's quite expensive do the middle bit a bit again but again once he reaches them outpost if he gets caught he's toast mm. completely because super low health but yeah. um yeah but the rest impact is absolutely immense I'd love Impactor. Oh, yeah. I would love Impactor. I've actually got a five-star pull ready to go, and I want Impactor. Oh, I want Hot Rod. But I'm saving them shards just in case. I want to see what comes next. So I'm, like I said to you, you know, in your stream, I'm a bit of a hoarder in that sense that I'm waiting for the next big thing. If that comes that it's not five-star shards, hey, I've not lost anything. I'm still doing well in Wars. I've got two pulls. and make a good video. Uh, but yeah, Impact is immense. I love Rook. He's on my war team right now. Sea Spray's on my war team. And Bumblebee. And we know how good Sea Spray is. We don't have to talk about that. He's... Oh no, Sea Spray is... I mean, when you guys were ready, you and Tex were rating your gunners, I think he was the only one you put in Godly, wasn't he? He's the only bot full stop we put in Godly. Out of mm. every class. Every single class had bots in the very good section. But no one was in Godly apart from Sea Spray. And that says it all. Literally the best bot in the game right now. Incredible. 
And again, oh, we're yeah. trying to show you some few replays, trying like, you know, maybe not convince you, but convince other people how good he is. I remember seeing one guy in the uh, Cybertron chat and it said, Seaspray isn't that good. And literally everyone just dived on him and was like, what are you on about? <laughs> and he's like, and he said, um, yeah, he doesn't do any damage apart from where the end, the end bit. We're like, no, he just damaged the whole length. He's like, are you sure? We're like, yes, yes, we're sure. Oh, I'll have to go and try that out then. We're like, what are you talking about, man? Absolutely incredible, honestly. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've always liked him. Even when he, before he was shown any love, I liked Sea Spray. When I got my, when I got my two-star Sea Spray, I thought, this is an incredible bot that I've just acquired. I used to play him in tandem with uh, Star Saber. I would send Star Saber up straight down the middle, and then I would follow up with Sea Spray's ability. And at the level I was at, at the time, it was very effective. I've always liked Sea Spray. Yeah. But again, Rook is what it is. Massively tanky. Great popping outpost. Just a better upgrade than RC, I think. But really good. But yeah. The only, pick... the only thing you can say as a caveat is RC, if you've got this one rocket launcher beam laser that's just getting on your nerves, you can just put an RC dupe over there and she has eventually, essentially nerfed that defense. And then yeah. you can focus on other things. And that's a point that Hoist actually made. Oh, God. It's probably like a year and a half ago that I was watching one of his streams and he made that point. And I'm like, yeah, he's, he's right about that. Um, so she has her uses, but you put her in tandem with some other bots, RC, Rook, and a few other ones, and that's something I'll get into later. Oh my god, it's chaos. Yeah. I mean, I use Rook a bit different for the damage. and we'll talk about Again, you can go and check out my video with text where we discuss Warriors. Um, mm -hmm. I understand RC's pull. It's a bit of a different way of looking at it. Uh, Rook also does more damage, but I'll oh, use yeah. Rook not just to pop out pulse, but do damage as well. So when I place the, the hollow down, I don't just place it on the outpost. I think that's job done. I look and go, where in that radius of that outpost can I do a lot of damage to a target that will help me, you know, take that, that, that target out easier. So whether it's an MDS or whether it's a beam laser, you could put that right next to a beam laser and you know it'll pop the outpost. It'll die pretty quick and do a lot of damage to that beam laser. And you can just finish it off with laser optimus or another bottle of Bumblebee or something else will finish it off very quickly. So it's like a double use for Rook, where he's got an advantage over RC of that damage. But I understand oh, yeah. RC is stunned as well as its pull. So again, that's why I wanted both of them. So, But yeah, if you had to pick one, would it be Swoop? I'm torn between Swoop and Sea Spray. Well, well yeah, obviously. Because they can both... <laughs> I, mean, for, I mean, for where I'm at in the game, they can both solo. Yeah. Um, They would both... And Sea Spray would fit very well with with two of my squads a swoop well here's on fear i think i wouldn't even put him in a squad he would just he would just be he would be the squad i think all five of these can solo oh yeah even rook easier than others yeah rook and bumblebee are a bit harder the other three very easily but even rook and oh, bumblebee yeah. can solo but yeah absolutely crazy box and then going on to the last batch which is the current batch so, where do you think? What do you think of these? So, I think we both like Slash from what I was hearing on your stream. Absolutely. Yep, I love I'm Slash. A big fan. I'm a big fan. Yeah, big fan also. Slash is my go to power leveler. If I want to level a bot quickly, I take Slash into zone, whatever, and I tend to clear the front section out with whatever bot I'm using, let it die, drop Slash to the HQ, goodbye, Vienna. It's gone. Amazing mm. bot for power leveling. Not too good in wars, but I understand why you love that bot so much. Because I, I said in that, that's why I use her. I use her strictly for power leveling, and she's one what of the best bots. You put on Flash? Megatronus all day. Megatronus all day. So I have, I've, I've got the game put away now. The core that heals for a percentage of the damage you do. Alchemist. Alchemist. I have the Alchemist Prime Core on her because once. She might take some damage while she's active, but once you activate her ability, well, now she's just going to get all of that health back. Yeah, yeah. I know some people so, that do use that. You know, it's, it's not a bad core. But for me, no. once I start using her, she doesn't come out of that cloak. She stays in that cloak. And so she doesn't need Alchemist because she's invisible. So I understand yeah, that if you're going to use her and then get have a bit of a break in between. Oh, my camera's just switched off for some reason. Um... But yeah, if you're going to use that and then use it in between, then uh, I kind of get that, you know. 
Um, I've just got to reset my camera. And there we go. Hey. Uh, and then, uh, ooh, pipes. I want that pipes. I don't. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, again, highest base health in the game alongside Ironhide and Trailbreaker. Ability similar to Power Magna. I like, I like, I know uh, you've mentioned before in stream that you don't like their abilities because it does damage behind you and you need to be doing damage in front of you. Yeah. And I get that. But his ability can pop out posts, yeah. not as well as, but similar to uh, Goldfire, well. if need be. Um, he will soak up a lot more damage. Yeah. Um, and then I. Uh, I plan to arm him with the Megatronus core and Pterodexton. So that will make him very dangerous in yeah. my mind. Uh, he will do more damage. He will heal himself for a percentage of the damage. And he already has, he, he's already the tankiest tank. You know, so he will do his job very, very well. So that I am all about some pipes. See, especially I... when they buffed his health. Especially when they buffed his health. See, I just don't like rush bots. So I don't like Power Magna, I don't like Ironhide, I don't like Pipes, I don't like Hotspot, I don't like Grimlock, I don't like Drift, and every other rush bot I can possibly name off the top of my head, I don't <laughs> like them. And so, and then when you think about it, they have Jumpstream and Pipes, I was like, why did I pick Jumpstream? And I understand now it's because, this is why I said as well, I don't want to come off on a tangent about five-star combiners. It makes sense that they pick Pipes because he's counterpart is headstrong which probably means that we're going to see predaking which probably mm -hmm. means we're going to see volcanicus now if they had to pick jump stream i'd have said maybe we're going to see five star victorian so that's where it makes me think that those come there's those combines with five star first yep but and then when you start to think about that you can start to predict who the next five star bots are going to be yeah, a few yeah. back out yeah but Pipes is not a combiner bot, so I can understand Headstrom being desirable, but not yep. Pipes. Not by any means. I get his tanky, but then so is Rook. But Rook doesn't rush off. Which is why I would rather have Pipes, because I can't get Rook where I need him. That's uh, where you put the hollow where you need it. <laughs> true, true, but the hollow is not going to do any damage while he's out there. He's going to provide a distraction. Yeah. He's not going to cause any damage but then, until he pulls up. Okay, but then you rush, you rush pipes in. The shield goes away. Pipes dies. That is literally what happens in Prime League. But then with Rook, well, you put the hollow down. In, it distracts. Events, the hollow does damage. Them, then you put another hollow down. It. And you're, you're further away with Rook. You're just further away from that damage. You're not on that front line. And I know, yes, they are tanks that are designed for... But why put them on the front line when you can get another bot that doesn't have to be on that front line as much? It's just it just makes them a focal point. And I just think that if you rush them ahead, not only listen, if you're at the back with your healers, you're getting healed, you might get hit by two or three defenses. If you rush pipes forwards, all of a sudden it's five, six, seven, eight, nine defenses hitting. So that's why I'm a bit hmm, not too sure. Well, by the time pipes or any rush bot gets sent out there, uh, uh, that I've I've already taken out anywhere from four to eight defenses, uh, some uh, anywhere from the middle to the back of the base. So I'll use my air bots to take out beam lasers, rocket launchers, um, shock towers if I can if I think I can one shot them. I can't always do that, uh, and then. And then I've, I've eliminated half the defenses on the base by that point. And then pipes, and iron hide, and hotspot, power man to get rushed out there. And they're taking half the damage they would have taken. Um, and they're doing exactly what they need to do while my air bots, who are now out of ability points, can walk. And they're perfectly safe. Yeah, I kind of get that. I kind of get it's a good protection bot. But I just think these bots out there do a lot better. That's the point yeah. I made. There. Oh. I have another purpose for for Rook. I have I have another use for him. Well, yeah. Uh, and then brainstorm. So I, I kind of understand if we're talking from leveling bots and soloing bots. Mm. Yeah, not very good at all. But I get him. I do get him. Just doesn't fit in with what I do. 
Maybe I'll find a way to make it work at some point. I'm not taking anything away from him. If I get him in my next five-star pull, well, now I'm going to have to figure it out, won't I? <laughs> I but... just think any bot that blocks 90% of damage is good from now until Jalemba. They'll always be relevant. It's just a cost. But if we start getting more ability points at higher levels, that makes it even more relevant. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I get if you're going to try and do it with two bots where you send him out and use another bot to, to combo that, like Air Raid. I, I kind of get that you might not like him in that sense, that he's quite expensive, and he is. But if he you is. just drop him in front of your team, and no one was really doing this in testing, and everyone was saying how expensive he was, and that, so I was like, yeah, but if you just do this, and that's the way you use it, and we're like, oh, actually, yeah, that's pretty decent. I do huge damage in a huge area for just the cost of Brainstorm. Mm. So, yeah, I kind of get if you like the solo bots, then maybe not. But And Red Alert, I'm not a big fan. Just... I wasn't until I got him. And I didn't know what to do with him. So I just slapped him on what is now a, essentially a five-star squad, which was formerly known as the Land of Misfit Children. <laughs> uh, and he has proven to be very, very useful. The 40% of damage absorption has helped a lot in my team walking. I use him in conjunction with Five Star Primal, so now you have an additional, you know, health shield and 40% damage reduction, and my bots just aren't going down. They're staying alive. They're walking. The, they're half of them are walking the base. It's been, it's been good. I, I've, I'm actually very pleased with them. Would I put them in another squad? Maybe if I had to put him in place of one of my other rush bots for a minute, but I like him where he is. He's 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 done he's done better than I thought he would do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not so I don't think he's a bad bot, but I don't think he's a great bot. Obviously great HP, but DPS. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then lastly, Skylinks. All day long. Okay. All day long. I knew you were gonna say time. that. So in the Psyops chat, people are saying this, and I think I've convinced a few people otherwise. So, do you use a four star? I do. He's on okay. my A squad. And uh, what do you use him for? Same thing I use my aerial bots for. I use him for one shotting. Occasionally, I will use his abilities in reverse and I'll do area damage. But for the most part, ah, he's got right, the okay. range and I'll, I'll use him to one shot okay. some of the more dangerous defenses. So, is there anything he can't one shot? <sighs> Mine is fifty-eight ten. He can one shot pretty much everything I come okay. across in zone fourteen. Okay. So if he can one shot everything as a four star, why do you the five star? Because I I will then filter the four star down to the B squad. Yeah. Who will, yeah. will replace three star? See, you got to remember. See, yeah, that's I've, a fair I've, point. I've yeah. 10, 15, 10 or ten to fourteen squads for the purpose of grinding the event so if i can create a stronger squad by taking this bot and putting him where this bot was and then taking the bot that was there and putting him here well now all the squads going down the line have benefited from this five star i'll give you that you know what i will give you that i will because i understand that i do actually replacing leveling bots in teams that using events like we said that use a lot of these bots for events and i'll give you that one but uh, i can say a quick bit of a funny story from the psyops chat when this got announced so everyone was like oh I'm, i can't wait for skylinks it does amazing damage and i was like what do you use a four star like why would you use a four star what for oh to one shot everything but the four star does that they're like yeah but yeah but the five star do more damage i went but what's the point in doing more damage than destroying something it could do more damage, but it's not going to do exactly the same thing. I was like, well, if you love him that much, why don't you use the four star? And they were like, oh, no, the pathing's awful. <laughs> well, the five star's going to do exactly the same thing. The five star's going to do exactly the same thing as the four star does. But I do understand that if you're just looking for more bots to fill more teams at a higher level, like you said, that five star is going to go in, improve that team, make it maybe even Maybe one day go to zone fifteen. Maybe the five star, the four star drops down to do a zone fourteen team, where the zone thirteen team might be a zone fourteen team now. So I kind of yeah. get that appeal. That you know what, touche, fair play. You know, I, I kind of get that sort of angle, and that's where this discussion has come from. It's a different angle. Yeah. And to be fair, I mean, there is absolutely 
no, there, there's no reason not to put another bot on your A squad. Even if you're doing what you need to do with the four star and your whole thing is I need this one squad to do this one thing, whether it be wars or something else, there's no reason not to replace the four star with the five star because the five star will have more health and there's, you can never have enough health. Definitely. You just never have enough health. Definitely. So I'm going to pick a few bots out just to, uh, Try and convince you how good they actually are. So All right. I'm not saying you said they're awful in any way, but I'm just going to show you how I use them sort of thing to to solo zones. That's the sort of idea. Uh, I'm just going to take one more bot here as well, just to prove a point. So, no combiners. And we're going to go into zone 14. Now, this might go horribly wrong. Obviously, it's saying easy. That's for the whole team. We're not taking the whole team. So, uh, this might go horribly wrong, but I'll guarantee that all these bots will come close. If not taking zone 14 down on their own. So we'll see. Again, base dependent, but we'll see. Well, for so, so far, the only... Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a base as such as this. Let's... Uh... We'll do a bit of Goldfire, I think. So this is to convince you how good Goldfire is at soloing. You'll see what I mean. Right. He's got Vector on. I'm a few seconds behind you because, like I said, I'm I'm watching it. From, yeah, I'm yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Everybody else is. But um, yeah, I have Vector on him. It'd be better with the age, but um, as you'll see, I'm just zipping around the base. That's all I'm doing. All right. The Titan obviously Eight. helps. Then his help is going really poorly. And then we'll use him again up there. And then lips lift fast, fast forward. Use a Titan beam over there. I mean, I presume obviously in events you wouldn't have a Titan, things like that. But you can see that most defenses are gone. And then uh, I'm even going to try and finish it off with a healer. There you go. Just to prove a point. Come on, Ratchet. Can you do it? And he's gone. No. Nope. He's still alive. Can he do it in time? I don't think he... Uh... Finished off with a healer. <laughs> That's how much, but that's not that's not a testament to the healer. That's a testament to Goldfire. That literally you can. That's a testament to 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 <laughs> Metroplex. As I <laughs> Maybe I'd love to be able to turn my Titan off to prove a point, but obviously I can't turn it off. But yeah. um, even with that gone, like I said, but um, trust me, if you use Goldfire just to zip around the base and kill the base, you can pretty much drop any bot after that. And it'll kill the base and smash it. Yeah. Now that would be a struggle if a player found themselves in a situation where they were using gold fire and then they were using a healer. In events, there's no Titan, like you said. And let's say they've already used up their top combiners, you know? So like and they're they've used up all their combiners, ten apiece. And if you're like me, you're not gonna drop another twenty five or thirteen into a combiner. You're gonna wait twelve hours for them to recharge. So these guys are on their own now. They would not have been successful. Oh, Goldfire would. Trust me. Goldfire would. He died. You had a Titan back in the <laughs> hey, Trust me. Even without a Titan. I was doing Zone 14 with Goldfire long before Titans were in the game. Trust me. Okay. In terms of Sea Spray, all we're going to look at is his damage. So obviously, yes, I've got a Titan before you start pulling that out of the bag. But let's look at his damage. So what oh, Sea Spray takes out. You don't have to be a Sea Spray. I'm, spray. Oh, I'm wow, Team like... Sea Spray all day long. But... Absolutely incredible. But yeah, just like one guy in Discord that was like, yeah, Sea Spray ain't that good. There we go. Everything yeah. in a line. And then everything in a line. And then everything in a line. But you can see there, yes, the Titan's taken out a few defenses. But Sea Spray's taken over 80% out. And you can even just hit the HQ with him. Just to add insult to injury and take out the HQ as well. There you go. Look at that. I just got to where you took out the front of the base. I mean, that is just that—that's work of art that I'm seeing right here. Honestly, he is 
unbelievably good. And this is why people say that it needs something doing because it's just too good. It's just too easy. I mean, you see me gold fire. There's like, yes, but you need to let it burn. And every bot should have a bit of a downside. Like Bumblebee. I think it's immense. But he does lack a bit of health. Struggles against outpost yeah. bots. And every bot should have that. Should have that bit of a negativity in some way where they can't. They're not all powerful and can do anything. That way we can nitpick at the little things all day long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't want a bot that can just be everything and anything and there's nothing to stop it, you know. Yeah. Okay, who's next on the list? Let's look at, look at the base. Okay. Let's pick you a nice... Uh... Say again? I said, okay, you're already in the battle now, but I was just saying, you did want to prove Hot Rod to me. I can. I, I don't have the four-star. And the four star oh. is quite a level. Like I said, he has to be ability eleven. He has to be. And there's no way I'm giving ability eleven to a four star. <laughs> <laughs> so uh I've, I've yeah. already done it. I've done it a few times. Bumblebee. I've I've given it to uh tracks, but that's it. So in terms yeah. of Bumblebee, so we've got some high level defenses here. So let's just, just gonna put I mean usually I put Alchemist on him. I can't remember what I've got on him at the minute. I don't think I've got any core on him apart from black. But yeah, you can see there that it's just take out defenses without anything else. Those defenses are going down, so they're stunning them and destroying them as well. Okay, I'm seeing it now. Yep. And yes, Titan's taking out the out of the base. I might actually do a few Zen farms, and then you can't blame the uh, Titan. <laughs> so you've got flak, okay. So you've got flak on him. So that's yeah. definitely definitely a move you have to make when you've got bumblebee. Yeah, you do need a range combat definitely. And then, like yeah. I said, so I'm putting that on him. You've got the prime core on him. That's that's what I said too. So, I mean, you've made him an effective gunner for sure. And then his uh, his EMP ability. It's just that's not a bad thing to have. Yeah, he's, he's basically become he's become skyburst light. And all I'm doing now is just uh, stunning the outpost bots. So they're not a problem. Again, I've got 33 ability points. It's only 12 for his ability. Easy takedown. Easy. As hmm. long as... The only problem is when he gets hit by them outpost bots. Yep. If he can survive that, he can survive anything. Because everything's just stunned. It's taking no damage. I think I had no healing core on him or anything then. It literally just took no damage because nothing's hitting him. Dirt cheap. I'll be honest with you, you've got at the very least you've got me thinking that I should give him flak and the primacore and add him to one of my gunner squads at the very yeah, least. Honestly, give him a give him any sort of health core. Give him a rejuvenate, give him the alchemist core. Some sort of core is gonna heal him. And all you gotta do is just keep spamming that ability. Honestly, and the amount of damage it does as well. It's just, honestly, really easy. Stunning them outpost bots, like I said. Take that initial damage, get some sort of healing, and yeah. Right, let's yeah. take his last few into Zen farming then, so you can't pull the uh, the Titan yeah. farming uh, <laughs> yeah. comment out. Even, even without the Titan, that, I mean, that was impressive. Because, it, it, I, and to my detriment, I do sometimes forget that combat bots are in the game, and they can drastically change the performance of any oh, given yeah. bot. Yeah. Bumblebee, that was the perfect example right there. Yeah. Definitely needs flak. That's a good that's a good uh, point that we need to sort of make. Um but yeah. So we'll go into zone fourteen without a Titan, without a combiner, and we'll see how we go. So if we come up against the HQ seventeen, even low level, then that could be a bit of a problem because then you find that they start got even MDS or mines and sh shark mines and and there we go, HG17, of course we have. Okay. <laughs> and so for that reason, uh, let's go with uh, interesting here now. So I'm going to use smoke screen because of the, because of the outposts around the HQ. So here's what I'm going to do. So here's a trick to smoke screen. The only things that can target smoke screen outside of his range are mortars, beam lasers, and launchers. So as long as you take them out, cannons won't hit you. Turrets won't hit you. Shock towers won't hit you. Let's just go to do this. Take them all out one by one. As you see, right. two shot in everything. Just keep hitting them. 
Now, sometimes it does time out because you can see there it took me a minute just to take those out. But then yeah. literally just. So it's got glitch on as well, uh, which obviously increases his damage. Yeah. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to path him out. I'm going to try and take these defenses out. We've got enough ability points. The fact that his ability never gets any more expensive, just... That is... Uh, Crazy. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't count on that sticking around for much longer. That just it will. So OP. It's because his health is so low. Oh. Nope. <laughs> Stop that in his tracks as well. Yeah. So now the path becomes a bit of a problem. I think it's good. Die. Oh, close. Close. All right. I'm at the point now where you popped an outpost bot, and uh, here Dies. comes the uh, <laughs> here comes the the fire from the rocket launcher, and he's got a core on that thing. Yeah. So now he's stuck in a wall. <laughs> yeah. Why did he blast his way through the wall? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, and. <laughs> No, for the win. Yeah, but you can see there that you can take out oh, once yeah. you get on the key structures and you can path him round. Then yeah, it's crazy what he can do. So yeah, he can even solo him, like I said, really good bot. Be really interesting now if we go through all this Zen farming and I don't get any Zen from it. <laughs> yeah. That'd be interesting because normally I'd take a Mega Supreme in or any combiner with these. It's more for the outpost bots. Those are the ones that cause the problems. Oh, yeah. And that's what I do, too. I pretty much stay... if Unless I've got higher level squads, I just take like all the bots that are at level 40. I go into zone 12. I send somebody in to take the outposts. And then I just go in there with Omega Supreme or Superior on, and I just clean up. And then everybody else just kind of goes in there and mops up. Yeah. Okay. So, so Rhinox next with his Transmetal G1... Uh, trans, sorry, Transmetal G, G Metal Transmetal. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> uh, and Taraxodon, which keeps him alive forever. So, yeah, we're literally going to just do get him up there, just get him right up to that HQ. Yep, and just take everything out. Yep, I am a big fan of Rhinox. Oh, he's absolutely immense. Just, just not oh, yeah. with Taraxodon. Doesn't matter if I hit the outpost spots, doesn't matter what I hit, he just does oh, not die. But wait, Waza, he's a rush bot. I know. So, I had to use him for one instance. So, in my team, he's in my war team. And I don't use him for 90% of the battle. But then what I do is, um, towards the end of the battle, when there's like healing cores behind the HQ and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I rush into the healing cores and his ability takes it out. Now, he has that ability. No other bot does where they rush to a section like that and just such, such a huge amount of damage and there we go you can even rush into a group of outpost bots and it will kill them and he, he's finished it with pretty much you know two oh, yeah. thirds of his health left absolutely yep. crazy crazy what this guy does honestly like i wasn't pleased when i got him as a five star I wasn't too chuffed but um yeah. His G metal core, yeah. His 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 trans metal core made all the difference. Especially if you put him in an outpost, because it reactivates the ability. So say yep. someone that pops the outpost, and then they go right. Well, I'm going to drop my combiner to avoid the outpost. Then obviously the uh, the bots will walk down to battle whatever out bots you've dropped. But then his ability will reactivate once he gets below a certain health, and that is. That is incredible. Honestly, that does a oh, yeah. lot of damage in an area. Especially if you're doing that sort of sack and then sort of thing. Um, okay. Very clustered base. What does that mean? It means we're going to do blades. No, buddy. And let's see how this guy does. So low health, but...
Alrighty. Crazy. Chaos. <laughs> yep. Oh, how it pains me to do this. And there we go. Wow. Oh, and thank you, uh, Jason Strebecki, for uh, subscribing as well. And yeah, really easy, Blaze. Take the whole cluster base out, pass around to HQ. Bang. Ooh. Easily. Oh, Easily yeah. Easily done. And that is how good Blades is. And then last couple we've got left. Oh, we've got Laser Optimus and Blaster. So again, Zone 14. No Titan to blame. So I don't, don't want to hear in this Titan excuse anymore. Hey, I never said that Blades wasn't a good one. <laughs> I never said Blade. I just said I didn't have room for him at this particular point. But how can you time. not? How can you not have room for a bot that, when at a higher I level, can plan. solo Zone 14? Like, you said you were leveling bots. <laughs> but your plan should be, I'm going to get blades. <laughs> no, I no, no. I already have a plan in place. To quote a former U.S. president, I'm staying the course. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I ain't got a clue who said that, but he sounds like a fool. W. <laughs> there you go. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get political, but <laughs> it was only a joke, guys. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah we apologize to all the uh, Republican viewers out there. Never solo in. Yeah, I'm definitely Team Laser Optimus. I mean, oh, yeah. oh wow. I've popped this really wrong right now, but we can take these bots out, I think, quite easily and then move on. And we still have the problem of his discs bouncing off of walls, and even with yeah. that, really significant amount of damage. Yeah, we did say that in testing and what it did changing, but they basically said it was impossible. So we went, right. <laughs> mm. But yeah, we said the same thing. I think we run out of time, though, I think. Just run out of time. Yeah, just run out of time. Oh, yeah. That time trap's killed him. That time trap's got him. But the amount of damage yeah. that he does is ridiculous. If he's paired with Wheeljack, I know you don't want healers. Not particularly. But you're paying with Wheeljack, it does, uh, the disc bounce. The disc don't just speed up, it bounces more discs out. So there, yeah, yeah. And then uh, the last one, last but not least, Blaster. And this yep. guy is just so... Oh, yeah, I don't know the bots are showing. Oh, yeah. This guy now, is just... when we get done with uh, this battle, there's something that I would like for you to try. And I just shoot. want to see what you think of it. Okay, shoot. What do you want me to do? All right, so after this battle, I'd like to see you do what Frankie and I call the Minion Squad. This was my idea. Frankie implemented it, and he has loved it. Every single bot that utilizes minions of some kind, as Blaster, Gnaw, Rook, Dinobot, RC, um, uh, Broadside, and now uh, Jetfire, Shattered Glass, uh, if you want to use that, and then also, uh, and this might take some time actually, so you may want to go this far, but you quiff all of them with minion bots of some kind. And then you activate all of their abilities. It is mass chaos. The base is overwhelmed. I bet. They don't know where to shoot. Well, I'll be honest with you, I don't have broadside, so I can't do that. Okay. Nor's in the lab. Nor has been at level 60 for about a year. <laughs> and I finally put him in the lab this week, and you're asking me to do a minion team. But I promise you, I promise you, if you ever come on your stream again, I'll set up a team, a minion team. Uh, I'll put Rook on there. I'll put Blaster yeah. on there. I'll put Nor on there. Um, I've got some four-star uh, combats. I've got Dial. I've got Night Stark I can put on there as well. Yep, yep. Uh, I've got I, Dinobot uh, at a decent level. I could put Dinobot in there with his hollows. That would yep. be a pretty good team. It's, I do it's, think I'm so. I'm telling you, it's so chaotic. I agree. 
The defenses don't know where to shoot. No matter where they look, there's another one. Um, <laughs> and it's just it, – and it has served it, – it, and when I, I came up with it, I was actually watching the hoist stream a couple of years ago. And he was saying, okay, what do you guys want to see us do? And I just thought – and he put together like a team of a couple of minions. And then I said to him on chat, I said, if you're going to do it, you got to do it right. And I listed all the bots that have minions. And he was like, okay. So yeah. he does it, and he gets done with it, and he goes, oh, that, that was interesting. Yeah, incredible. You know? that. So I pitched it to the Frankster, having not done it myself, and he has loved it. So I'm finally putting that squad together myself. I've got bots in the oven, Gnaw and Blaster, and uh, Dino Bot, Broadside, and uh, I'm going to implement that as another uh, event grinding squad. Well, that, that, that last battle there with Blaster, I mean, literally, I put his minions down with Quintus yep. as well, and Trax done so he heals. And press fast forward in zone 14. And then oh, again, yeah. so same as Laser Optimus, the only thing that will stop him is a time trap with a lot of walls. That's the yeah. only thing that will stop him. Other than that, put it down, fast forward. I dropped his ability twice that last battle, and he finished with full health. Absolutely yeah. incredible. So, but yeah, but I promise you that minion sounds good. And uh, I promise you we'll do it uh, sometime on your channel and we'll try it out at a decent level. Probably not a prime league. It's probably not a prime league strategy by any stretch of the imagination. But if nothing else, it is fun well, to watch. I'll tell you what, with a couple of healers, I'd try it in zone 15. There you go. With Dinobot, with No, with Blaster, with... Struts. Yeah. You with, don't uh... have to get those you don't have to get those pesky healing bots out there. Just have stripes and then you're staying Oh no, no, uh, no. You're, you're no. staying true to the strategy. I'll Minions. tell you what I'll do. I will tell you what we'll do in another stream. We'll do it with healers and without healers and see the difference. That'd be interesting. Okay. <laughs> it's a date. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I'm there. Deal. Uh for yeah, but that's the end of the stream. So yes, got on for ages this stream, but it's been fun, like I said, and uh talk to you and Getting your angle on it, like I said, and it's very, very, you know, a bit of a different talking point. You know, seeing that it's not all about wars at lower levels in the game. And again, not everyone enjoys wars down the uh, sort of lower leagues. And uh, oh, yeah. where you guys focus on, you know, leveling bots more. I kind of get that different angle now. So, um, you know, when I look at my videos about bots that I think are decent, you know, I'll keep that in mind. Do you know what I mean? Maybe a different angle. But, uh, yes, sir, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it and, uh, you know, talking for the last two hours. So it's been brilliant. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can come on your channel again sometime. Don't forget to check out that video tomorrow. I think it'll be posted, you say? Should be tomorrow? Yeah, uh, I'll be uh, editing it this evening. It'll be up, depending on your time zone. Uh, if uh, For me, I'm in Eastern Standard Time, United States. It'll be up uh, Friday morning. Cool. Well, I'll put a link to that channel in the description below for those that are watching afterwards. If you're watching now, go and check out FPS Gaming, guys, the podcast. It's really good, like I said. Uh, go and check out, obviously, uh, DJ Our Hearts channel as well, as well as your other content creators. And, uh, yeah, again, thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. And for this time, guys, thanks for watching. And peace out, guys. Cross your hearts, everybody. <laughs>